Um, good evening. This is the uh, Lakeville Select Board and acting as the Wager Personal Board as needed uh, at the Lakeville Police Station, 323 Bedford Street, September 29, 2022 at 6 p.m. Please ask if anybody is recording the meeting announced that um, uh, Lake Cam is, is uh, taping the meeting. Okay. Uh, first thing on the agenda is select board announcement. The uh, Lakeville Arts Council is sponsoring the 17th annual Lakeville Arts and Music Festival on Saturday, October 1st, between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. at the junctions of uh, Route 105 and 18 and Precinct Street in Lakeville, rain or shine. It doesn't look, the weather doesn't look great, unfortunately. The festival will bring usual day of culture, jury, crafts, food, live musical entertainment, artistic talents, and community memories for everybody who attends. There'll be a variety of 50 uh, juried artisans selling their ha handmade items. For additional information, please go to uh, www.lakevillearts.council.ma.org. Lakeville Fire Department, open house on Saturday, October 8th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. There'll be pizza and popcorn. You can try out our, our cornhole. You can try out your cornhole skills and test your throwing arm on a dunk tank. There'll be props to take pictures and kids, uh, uh, kids firehouse activity and flow path simulator, as well as an antique fire truck. This will be held on the fire station at 346 Bedford Street. Elliott Farm, located at um, 202 uh, Main Street, will be holding a harvest festival on Saturday, October 8th, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Please visit the website at www.elliottfarm.org slash backslash harvest festival for more details. On October 9th, from 11 to 4 p.m., an event will be held at the uh, Betty's Neck, located off Long Point Road to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the town of Lakeville of uh, purchasing the property. You can pick up a picnic lunch and explore the property or enjoy your lunch listening to music provided by Blake Gorman. At 1 p.m., Wingmasters will put on a Birds of Prey show, followed by free face painting from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Lakeville D DPW and Fire and Police will have vehicles on hand for kids to, cho to uh, choose up to view, and each child 10 and under will receive a surprise. Um, also, uh, I'd like to thank the uh, Lakeville Lions Club with uh, the help of Winbergs for uh, uh, doing the islands out there and putting the mums out there. We really appreciate that. That's it. Next on the agenda is the town administrator's announcements. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. A lot of good stuff happening. Um, the police department has been awarded grants of $19,947 from the state for traffic safety campaigns and $5,925 from the Federal Bureau of, Bureau of Justice Assistance for bulletproof vests. Um, the town was also awarded, as I believe I mentioned before, a $25,000 earmark in the FY23 state budget to advance the Bridge Street intersection by undertaking a traffic studies required by MassDOT. This initial step will allow the town to seek funding for design and construction. We are in conversations with the state about freeing up that, those funds. The town received its second ARPA payment from the federal government today. To date, the select board has approved just under $180,000 for COVID preparation, um, response, parks projects, and the water feasibility study. In addition, the board appro approved the submission of a $600,300 proposal to Plymouth County for water improvements to town facilities, which is currently in the review process. Um, we are nearing completion on an ADA project grant application to rehabilitate the sidewalks at Asawamps at Elementary School, which has not been significantly upgraded since the 1987 renovation. As you recall, this application was made possible by the completion of the town's self-evaluation and transition plan last year. A plan is to apply for $250,000, which is the maximum allowable amount, and should handle most of the, uh, the, the work there. The next phase of road work on Montgomery Street and Long Point Road is taking place this week. Residents are encouraged to exercise patience and seek alternative routes when possible. Uh, we had a planning meeting last week with the town's consultant, council, and staff concerning the Route 79 project. MassDOT is on track to approve easement plans in the next four to six weeks. Several easements are located across the town line, and one area is under conservation restrictions, which will present some logistical and statutory challenges as is Article 97 involved. Town Council will be drafting an intermunicipal inter agreement to work through the process. The current schedule envisions the town milling letters of intent to residents in January. Um, improvements at Ted Williams Camp are proceeding. Our contractor completed installation of the fence behind Loon Pond Lodge last week. 
This project improved the layout of the area above the pond and safety for guests attending events at the lodge and really looks terrific. Uh, the cost is being shared between the town and Boston Tavern. Uh, another thing which looks great are the tennis courts. Uh, the rehabilitation project there is nearly complete. Uh, the fire station reconfiguration continues to advance. The contractor installed drywall and began work on the second floor this week. Our outside project manager is also moving forward on his initial set of facilities projects, including the old library entrance, outdoor stage cover, and the wall installation in the accounting slash HR uh, shared space. Um, work on the Ted Williams Camp tennis courts, as I mentioned, began with, I heard I mentioned, I'm sorry, this week. Um, open meeting law training for committees and staff, which will be provided by KP Law, will take place on October 26th for two sessions at 4 and 6 p.m. I'll be reaching out to committees, make sure they, they know about it. The training will be held at the Lakeville Library. <coughs> Finally, the next meeting of the select board will be on October 11th, which is a Tuesday at 5 p.m. at the Lakeville Police Station. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Any you. questions? All set, Leah. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So next on the agenda is to uh, discuss and vote possible vote on the articles for the November 14, 2022 special town meeting. Um, just so everybody knows what the schedule is at this point is that uh, tonight we are voting on the articles to put on the warrant then tomorrow we'll be sending the articles for town council for review the final the vote on the final warrant will be october 11th uh, the legal ad will be put in the paper on october 24th the warrant posting will be posted on october 24th and the warrant review will either be october 24th or the first meeting in november Okay. Right. So, um, the first article is uh, an article to transfer a sum of $11,000 from free cash and $297.35 from Park Retain Earnings to pay the uh, following unpaid bills from prior fiscal year and taking the action there too. So, um, Mr. The Chairman, yes. uh, came to my attention just this week um, that there may be a couple of additional um, un, uh, late bills. So, okay. Mr. Hassel will bring that forward in time for the. Okay. For the All right. So, I'll entertain a motion to uh, put the um, that article on the uh, special town meeting. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Next article is to. Uh, uh, to vote to raise an appropriate from taxation the sum of $75,000 to supplement the appropriation stated below, which was previously voted on Article 1 on May 9, 2022. Annual town meeting beginning July 1st, 2022 for various departments and they take any other action to two. There's two items on there. Uh, the first item is um, $50,000 uh, to hire a facilities manager. And the second item is to uh, the twenty thousand dollars for fire expense for protective clothing. I entertain a motion to put that article on town meeting, special town meeting. So moved. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next article is to um, to see if the town will vote and raise appropriate transfer available funds, borrow otherwise, provide a sum of money for the capital improvements and the equipment of all costs incidental and radiated there too. To authorize the town officials to take any action to execute all documents that may be necessary to effect effectuate the purposes of this vote and take any action there too. Number one is the police department, uh, for thirty thousand dollars out of free cash to replace their um, their firearms. Number two is the fire station schematic design of two hundred twenty thousand dollars. Number three, the town hall. Uh, schematic design of two hundred five thousand dollars out of free cash for four hundred and fifty five thousand dollars. I entertain a motion to put it on a town meeting. So moved. Second. Discussion. Just um, briefly, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, the schematic designs. Um, so, if we were to continue to have discussion about the feasibility study, would that have any impact as to um, the design? Uh, I don't think so. It all depends what kind of discussion it's a from the question, I'm sorry. Okay, so if we, because um, I know, it, you know, there's um, the possibility that there'll be 
um, additional information coming out to us mm -hmm. um, regarding the feasibility of the, the current location. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, as I yeah, as you requested, there's some follow-up information forthcoming. So that that that'll be in our hands probably within the next few days. Um, so but that that won't cause anything having to do with the design. Right? Okay. No, it shouldn't. Okay, right. all right. But even if we vote it tonight, if we have to adjust in any way, we can do so. But um, this 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 is two separate projects. Right. Okay. Right. So there's two separate architects. So we'd have to hire us one architect for the fire station and one architect for the town hall. So it can't be combined. Right. If that's your question. Right. That's kind of my question. Because I don't know that our discussion has completely come full circle regarding the feasibility of the current location for a fire station. I know that there's additional information coming out. Um, I just don't want to pigeonhole ourselves. It has to be two separate amounts. It can't be combined together, if that's your question. We have to hire an architect. Right. They're two, two different architects. They're not, they have, we have to go out to bid. We have to send an RFP. The only way would be one is if you're doing a single building. Right. So. Could I ask what, what we're waiting for? I thought the feasibility study was pretty cut and dry on what needs to be done and what can't be done. What is it that we're waiting for? I asked for additional information um, because it wasn't very clear to me as to why the current location was not an option um, or a viable option um, with an expansion or an addition onto the current location. So I had, um, you know, inquired about maybe having you know, some kind of a, an addendum to the feasibility explaining why or why they couldn't put an addition on that the facility. I, so, uh, I'm, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I interpret it completely different, Lorraine. I think that the question has been asked and answered. Everything from the hazard mitigation plan, which was done, done by an outside engineering firm that said it's not an ideal location, first of all. Second of all, we're not supposed to let allow anyone to build within 600 feet of the water supply. Third of all, the water suppliers of both New Bedford and Taunton have indicated that they don't want to be put in a position where they have to vote yay or nay because we want to build something so close to their water. Um, I thought the septic tank was bad and I didn't think structurally the actual fire station it would have to be taken down to the ground and rebuilt. So I'm not quite sure what's left to discuss and why we can't just go forward here. Well, my question was not necessarily utilizing, um, you know, the current facility for, you know, an add on up, you know, up, up top based on the conversation that we had at the last meeting, um, but to explore an, you know, an addition on there. There's, there's really not enough room there for square feet. We're talking about, you know, 11,000 using the existing building for town hall. And that includes moving the people over from the, uh, the old library. And also, you know, I think what's the number? 16,000 square feet, I think, chief, somewhere in that area. I don't know how you do that. We put 16,000 square feet in addition because you're very restricted on the sidelines and you're very restricted in the back you're restricted with septic systems and and everything um i had suggested you know to to ari when you asked ari about a week and a half ago i said why don't we set a meeting up with the feasibility study committee and set a meeting up with the the uh, companies that did it so you can ask all your questions and, and you said you didn't want to do that so well not have you know not tie everybody up in, in a meeting but i had some very specific questions that you know i went right to the um, we don't know what those questions are. No, it was a, my specific question was, you know, what was the, you know, the results? Um, cause it did, it wasn't spelled out clearly enough for me, um, you know, to, um, I guess support, you know, a new facility in another location. Um, so I just asked the questions about an addition, you know, outside of. So I also, through you, Mr. Chair, think that wasn't it the Board of Health that said that they weren't willing to entertain 
another variance to the existing septic system. Yes, yes, and I was very thankful that you had forwarded the, the minutes. Yeah. And it wouldn't be, there would be no increase in flow because we would be not increasing the staff in any way. Well, <clears throat> yes, we would. Okay, number one. Number two is that if we don't increase the flow, we can't have any conference rooms and meetings room in that building. Right, and right. How are we gonna function without that? Well, that was the other thing. If if we were able to add on um, and you know completely renovate you know the section for the the fire department, um, then the meeting space, you know, we're in the process of you know having a um, a design look at for the the senior center. Perhaps we put the meeting space there. I you should not have a, a town hall that has no meeting space and no conference room. I'm sorry. That's the problem we have right now. And the problem is that we're all fighting for space around here. And, you know, there's too many committees looking for space, and that's been a serious problem. Mm -hmm. So that's know, why I was making the suggestion that we, you know, move it over to. So what, what are we looking to add an addition for on that building? I'm not, I guess I just don't understand. Well, obviously, the bays are not large enough to accommodate the apparatuses. So if we were to expand out, um, you know, four bays for the large apparatuses and go up for the, you know, the, the bunkhouse and the showers. Um, and then we can, you know, look at the, you know, the other space inside, maybe close off the first bay um, and remodel completely so that we can set up with, you know, but whatever's the functionality that they need. Isn't that the most expensive part of the construction though, building four big bays and the bunkhouse? You're gonna incur almost as much cost by making an addition still in the wrong place according to an outside engineering firm on the hazard mitigation plan. As we know, during the floods of 2010, you couldn't access the fire department. They had to station themselves on either side of town. Um, second of all, we're still dealing with the septic system. Third of all, now we're building even closer to the 600 feet on what's Taunton and New Bedford's water supply. I, I guess it's just pretty cut and dry to me and I'm not quite sure why it's not to you. Well, I just don't think that what is it explained enough, you know, through the feasibility, you know, to make that decision. So, Mr. Chairman, so I, I did at Lorraine's request, I did reach out to um, Sucrotech and they're preparing, uh, as you know, a letter um, which will provide some further explanation of the reasons why option one was not a preferred option. Um, and that was, you know, so good text analysis as well as the, the, the project group as well. That was a unanimous, um, uh, and, you know, and there was determination about by the group, developed by Soka Tech. However, um, you know, there's certainly nothing wrong with expanding upon that a little bit and explaining why that's the case. Um, I think the, 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 I think the core reasons are already in the report, but we can certainly I, I think it's very clear that uh, I asked the building inspector, Nate Gowan, that you want to comment on some of the things that, you know, you have to come up here, Nate, sorry. I mean, there's, there's no way that you can put a second floor on that building. There's no way you can expand that building of that size to accommodate both the uh, town hall and the fire station. It's just not doable. So with regards to going on a second floor of the existing building, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. you, you can't go up. You'd have to tear it down, uh, start from the base, get adequate footings and stem walls and, and then build off of that. So that's that's not a viable option. There are definitely site constraints um, for law coverage purposes. Of course, we're trying to be sensitive to the drinking water supply um, and the allowable increase in flow. Um, I think what Lorraine, what you're asking is, is just greater clarification on those details as to why an addition or going up doesn't work. Um, so that's what, we got, that's what we'll be providing. Yeah. yeah. And once again, uh, we'll set a meeting up with the feasibility study next week if you want to discuss all these issues so they can discuss it with you instead of just sending a letter. Because, uh, you know, I, I think it's important. Well, I think it's important that we at least, you know, really, I guess, digest, um, you know, not utilizing the space or not utilizing the space. Um, I want to make sure that, you know, our, our fire department has um, the functionality, you know, in the space that, you know, they need to function appropriately. 
but I also want to make sure that we're doing this, you know, with the financial, um, you know, response that, you know, that'll work for the taxpayers. I understand all that. And I agree with that. I don't like the price tag for the town hall myself, but I do think that we just can't put a fire station in the town hall in that same building. There's just too many issues. Um, everything from handicap accessibility to all kinds of problems, you know, you'd have to update and help me out here, Nate. If you change that building at all, you got to change everything in that building, including sprinkle the system. Mm -hmm. We're not planning on sprinkling the system. So if you add an addition onto that building, you got to sprinkle that building, right? Which is a that. huge, huge cost. And every, everything has subsequent triggers. So you know when we start working on that, and you know you're going to be dealing with the ADA requirements, accessibility. Uh, that's going to trigger uh, you know, sprinkler system, asbestos abatement, things of that nature. I think that you know the group that sat together with the, the feasibility study folks with SoCoTech, um, when we were looking at it, there's, there's really no arguing that we need to do something for our firefighters. I think we all agree with that. Um, we just need to evaluate every single course of action and the costs associated with it. And SoCoTech did a, a good job doing that. Um, I think that one thing, you know, with the addition work, it may be prudent to get a quick summary as to why that would be ruled out, the costs associated with it. Um, a lot of times we're looking at, you know, how we operate procedurally and like Rich said with uh, meeting space. So if it's important to have meeting space in the building, we've got to figure out how we're going to get that. Um, if it's an option to do it at uh, the COA, which I do think was identified at one point, we've got to, get a, we've got to figure out what it costs to do that. Um, the, the important piece is that we get money right now for design um, because it's just going to put us further and further. Right, and I don't want to hold, I certainly don't want to hold up the process, but, yeah. you know. So, you know, it is, it is important that we go to schematic design on this, on, on something. Okay. Or, uh, we're just going to delay it further. So, you know, once again, it, uh, memos have a way that don't necessarily have full clarification. And if you want, I said, and I've offered this a week and a half ago, if you want to set a meeting up with them and the feasibility study to review and review that letter or whatever, I'm glad they do right. that for and you. And I just, yeah, I wanted to make sure that I had the conversation first. And well, I mean, honestly, I think that's, you know, this is just my opinion, Lorraine. This, we've been talking about this for a while. Ari reached out to me and said, do you want to talk to the feasibility people? And I said, my questions have been asked and answered because he said that you had questions. I was shocked when he said you didn't want to meet. So if we had had this conversation with the feasibility people a week to 10 days ago, we would have been ready to vote on this, like Nate said, and get this moving. So I'm not quite sure why you're waiting until this point. I mean, but whatever. That's if we want to have a meeting, I'll I'll attend a meeting and hear everything we've already heard before. It's fine. Okay, so there's a motion on the floor to, um, and there's been a second, I believe. Yep. Mm -hmm. All those in right. favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Good. All right. Uh, next one. Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. Um, to see if the town will vote to appropriate borrow or transfer available funds and amount of money to be expended on the direction of the town of Lakeville for replacing the windows and exterior doors at S. Wompsitz Elementary School lo located at 232 Main Street in uh, Lakeville, Mass. Um, which, uh, which proposed repair project would materially extend the useful life of the school and preserve an asset that is otherwise capable of supporting the required educational program and for which the town may be eligible. <laughs> for the constru school construction cost from the Massachusetts School Building Authority. The town acknowledges the Mass, uh, Mass School Building Authority grant program as a non-entitlement discretionary program based on the need as required by the uh, MSBA and the grants program. And any project cost, the town incurs in excess of any grant amount to be uh, received from the MSBA will solely be responsibility of the town. Any of the town may receive from the MSBA project shall not exceed 53.53.53% uh, of eligible approved project costs as determined by the MSBA. Total maximum of the grant determined by the MSBA. I intend a motion to put it on the um, town warrant. So moved. Second. Um, just so you know, the uh, state approved this on uh, 
August 31st, I believe. Thereabouts. Thereabouts, exactly something. So they have approved this project. And so we will get uh, the project is um, just about $4 million. And we'll get 53.3%. Uh, it replaces all the windows and all the doors uh, at Asselops at school, which is badly needed. Exterior doors. Huh? Exterior doors. Exterior doors, right. All those in favor? One, just one, I just noticed one thing. So is it 232 Main Street or 233 Main, 232 Main <coughs> Road? Is that, it's a, well, we can fix that. No I, I just, it's not the street. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, next article is to see if the town will vote to appropriate. Can we vote? I'm sorry, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next article is to see if the town will vote to appropriate, uh, uh, appropriate a reserve from the CUNY Preservation Fund annual revenues and the amounts recommended by the, the Community Street. Preservation Committee for the Committee Administrative Expenses and Community Preservation Projects and any expenses in fiscal year 23, which will, do, which, which will item will be considered a separate appropriation. Appropriation of um, 87.50 for 2023 estimated revenues for the committee administrative inspections reserves for 2023 historical uh, resources reserve 17,500 estimated reserve from the community housing reserve 17,500 and an estimated reserve for open space reserve 17,500 estimated revenues for budgeted reserve 113,750. Uh, take any action there too. Do you want to ask for a motion? Well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Somebody want to say? Second. Anybody want to second? I'll second with some conversation. Yeah. Um, what's the total here? I, I... One seventy-five. Okay, and. Um, I know this is allowable, but what is the reason that we're being given that this has to, I believe this is kind of like putting the cart before the horse. Am I correct? That's correct. This money cannot be used and appropriated until the uh, reserves until uh, May of uh, 2023. Uh, in my opinion, I don't have any problem putting it on. But in my opinion, the uh, Board of Assessors are two months away from uh, having the exact revenues instead of estimating the revenues, which would be better off since you can't spend this money now and you only can spend it in uh, May. Uh, I don't see any reason why this, is, this article is important right now, but uh, that's what they want to do. That's fine with me. Okay. Um, also, the state match wouldn't come in. Right, there's no match in this. No match. There's no match. The match would not come in until November this... 1st of 2023. Right. Okay. Um, I, hey. I mean, you know, that's what the committee wants to do. That That's fine. But I just feel like this is putting the cart before the horse, mm -hmm. especially because I was an assessor. So I do know that very soon we'll have, you know, the um, the actual numbers, but I don't know if that's what the committee wants to do. We did offer five thousand dollars for startup for administrative administrative costs, right? And that was rejected. So uh, we're <clears throat> clear here that uh, we're talking about administrative expenses. We're not talking about wages or salaries. Well, in theory, administrative expenses could be wages or salaries. But they have to they have to present a budget if they're going to. They have, they, they have, the CPC has the ability to develop a budget, which we which, which we would in turn post into the system. They don't need to go tell me for administrative for the administrative piece. They don't require a separate vote of town meeting to but to budget that out. I disagree with that. I read these the uh, the zoning the, the bylaw that was passed in two thousand and six, but I'm not going to get into that because uh, I think that. Uh, it's a whole different scenario, which we're going to discuss later. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next item to receive the town vote to uh, amend section 13, chapter 3 of the town bylaws to relative select board, section 16, chapter 2 of the town general bylaws relative to the finance committee, and section chapter 3 of the town's general bylaws relative to the capital improvement committee. All, all making the timeline for establishing the annual town budget with consistent 
more consistent with the town administrator by, uh, by law and timeline in recent years as shown with additions in the bold. So basically this is uh, the same pretty much except that the, uh, the dates are going to change <clears throat> upon when the uh, budgets are, um, are supposed to be in and the capital plan is supposed to be in. If somebody, if the, one of the members of the board wants to read the whole thing, you're welcome to do that. I can do that if you want. I don't think it's necessary, but that's up to you. Well, it's posted, right? Isn't it posted already? Yeah, it will be. Yeah. But even this packet has been posted for tonight, yes, that's correct? correct. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> okay. It's up to you. Anybody want to read it? I think as long as it's posted, doesn't that cover our open meeting yes, it does. requirement? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, hey, next article is to see if the town will vote to authorize the select board to, to grant the Massachusetts Historical Commission any qualified entity historical preservation restriction on the town owned property located at 2 Precinct Street, Lakeville. In Old Town Hall building there on and such items and conditions for such duration, which may be in excess of 30 years, as the select board deems in the best interest of the town. Further authorize the select board to apply for and accept and expend all, any and all gifts, grants, or reimbursement for funds from the federal, state, and local sources. Without limitation, any grants or any reimbursements under the Commonwealth's Preservation Project Plan, Project Fund uh, for the preservation of the Old Town Hall and costs incidental or related thereto, to execute any agree, all agreements, restrictions, and documents necessary convenient to accomplish the foregoing and take any action thereto. Thanks so moved. Second. Uh, discussion basically this is um, Nancy you could probably explain it better than I can Nancy LaFave but uh, this would give us the opportunity to apply for grants at the state level if we do this and federal level excuse me all those in favor aye 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 okay uh, okay next article is to see if the town will vote to amend the town's community preservation committee bylaw to delete references to the housing authority as shown below, or take any action relative thereto. Number one, delete the sixth paragraph of section one in its entirety, which currently reads one member of the housing authority is designated by the, by the authority for initial term of two years and therefore for a term of three years. Amend the eighth paragraph of the section shown herein, which additions in bold and deletions, uh, four members to be appointed by the select board, one member to be appointed by the term of one year thereafter for the term of three years, and three members to be appointed for the term of two years thereafter for term of three years, provided that one of the two appointments okay. shall be an individual with experience in the area of clearance of substandard, decadent, or blighted, blighted open areas or provision of housing for family or elderly persons of low income and encouraging a land assembly and redevelopment projects, including preservation, restoration, or relocation of historical buildings. And then the uh, second section, Two, one, as shown here with the additions to hold the committee will consult with the municipal boards, including the Conservation Commission, Historical Commission, the Planning Board, the Park Commission, uh, or persons acting as those capacities for performing like duties, conducting, conducting such studies. And take a motion. So moved. Second. Discussion. Basically, the reason why this article has to be done is we don't have a housing authority. Anybody have any question? crooked lane the part where it says or engaging in a land assembly and redevelopment projects does that mean developers Pardon? does that mean like normal developers like the developers we're dealing with in other areas or is that just people who work in read what is a redevelopment project a redevelopment project is taking an existing facility and redeveloping it okay so let's let's say you have a, a building that uh Needs to be redeveloped, and they want to they want to change it to uh, elderly housing or low income housing. Okay. Yeah. So it, it can be a developer. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next article is to see if the town votes in the toning mm -hmm. the uh, town zoning bylaws to add section eight point uh, administration eight point two 
Planning Board Associate Member. There will be one Associate Member recommended by the Planning Board and appointed annually by the Select Board for one year term. The Associate Member shall sit on the Board for purposes of acting on special permit applications in case of absence and ability to act or conflict of interest as part of the Planning Board or an event on a vacancy on the Board. And renumber the remainder of the sections accordingly or take any action there too. And Dana, motion to uh, put it on the warrant. So moved. And forward for a hearing or? Uh, I'm sorry, thank you for reminding me. And uh, forward to the planning board for a public hearing. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next on the agenda is to, uh, next on the next article is to see if the town will vote to accept the following boards, committees, or commission hold a, a, a judiciary uh, hearings in the town. The provisions of Mass General Law Section 23D, which provide, will provide the member of a board committee holding a judiciary hearing, shall not be disqualified for voting in the matter solely due to the member's absence from one session of such hearing, provided that the certain conditions are established uh, by said statute and met. Uh, boards affected uh, the planning board and the zoning board of appeals. Mr. Chairman, uh, the conservation commission has also accepted. Oh, the conservation. Well, we're okay. add them Thank as you. Well. Yeah. Thank you. And the conservation commission. Entertain a motion to uh, put this article in the uh, board. So moved. And forward to planning board. Yep. Oh, not that no, one. Not that one. Second. A, yes, um, um, second. A uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next article is to see if the town vote to amend the town the town equal zoning bylaws section 7.4.6 specific uses from uh, special permit remove signs off uh, premise. So the deleting a section of the, uh, the zoning bylaw. Take a motion to approve. So discussion second. Second, and that one we have to forward yep. right. Yes. Okay. And forward to the uh, planning board. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, to see if the town will vote to amend the, the town of Lakeville zoning bylaws, section 5.0, intensity regulations, 5.2, uh, footnotes to intensity requirements, two. Add section 5.2. In the business district, one side of the rear yard setback on a non-conforming lot abutting other business districts may be reduced by 50% by special permit issued by the planning board. This is, may only be granted if the applicant should show the satisfaction of the board that the reduced setbacks are necessary in order to allow most desirable and efficient design to non-conformity of the lot. Maintain a motion to put it on the warrant and forward it to the planning board for a public hearing. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, next is to see if the town will amend the zoning bylaws to add sections 4.1.3 uh, industrial uses, warehouse offices, or facilities for distribution of 100,000 square feet, and add section 7.4 specific uses by special permits. Um, so the um, chart would say in residential, not allowed, business lot allowed, industrial special permit, and industrial B special permit. Warehouses, the uh, planning board, special permitting authority is the planning board. A single building and combination of buildings that exceed 100,000 square feet located in the same lot shall require a special permit from the planning board. And a motion to approve that and put it on a warrant and forward it to the planning board for public hearing. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next is to um, to see if the town will vote to remove the entirety of section 7.9 development opportunities district from the lake the, from the town of Lakeville zoning bylaws or take any action there too. And, and forward it to the planning board for public hearing. I entertain a motion to uh, put it on the warrant. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm sorry. Can I ask you a question? Sure, would you please come up here? No. Uh, my name is John Jenkins. I live on Pickens Street. Um, 
this article would remove the DOD from the town laws. That's correct. Why is that happening? I don't know. That's the planning board. You have to go to the planning board hearing and ask them. So the head of the planning board is here. Can he be asked in this meeting? Well, he can't represent the planning board. You, you mean, you know, he's, he's one person. So you'd have to go to the planning board hearing to discuss that. But that's what they have. The, this was a while ago, right, Mike? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was back okay. in so May, I think. I'm sorry. So okay. the DOD is being taken away for some reason that can't be stated in this meeting. No, not well without the full planning board here. And we can't get that answer until we go to the next planning board meeting, but this article will be approved at this point and put on the town warrant. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And forward the uh, forward to the planning board for a public hearing. I think we already voted on it. Yeah, okay. I think we did. Yep. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> We have two left. I think we got more than that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, sorry. <laughs> uh, we'll ways to we, go. Uh, in fairness to the uh, CPC committee, you know, I don't see it's being done by seven o'clock, and I know you're going to the park commission meeting, so I don't know what they want to do. So, I mean, I'll continue on, but. Okay, we'll see what happens. Okay, next article is to see if the town will vote to amend the uh, Lakeville zoning bylaws by modifying the following sections. Section 7.5.1, title and purpose, to delete the words, each as, in, as effect as of June 16, 2003, and the second se second of the uh, last paragraph there too. Amend number two, amend 7.5.3, uh, permitted pr principal use to add a section six as follows, um, which says warehouse offices or facilities for distributing merchandise. Number three, amend section um, seven five point five two buffer zones to lead the existing text thereof and replace it with the text that follows. Developments in the mixed use development districts shall be subject to five point two point five of this bylaw notwithstanding uh, underlying zoning districts. This, the provisions of this section 5.2.5 of this bylaw um, shall bylaw, by notwithstanding underlying zo zoning districts, the provisions of section 0.5.5 of this bylaw shall not apply to zoning boundary to internal um, to the mixed use development district. Number four, is to amend 7.5.53 lot coverage for offices and our uh, research and development uses to replace the existing ses section and the following lot coverages for all office, warehouse, offices, or facilities distributing merchandise and R&D located in the mixed use development district, a maximum of 60,000 of upland area and a lot may be covered by structures, parking, and paved areas. Number five is amend section 7.557 site plan approval to insert the following section. Provided the planning board may many grant exemptions from provisions in 6.7.7 as set forth and based on the factors in the introductory paragraph, paragraph to such section are based on the type of structure proposed in the mixed use development district. Number six is amend section 5.58 to add new sentence at the end thereof, none of the public hearings shall be provided as, none, notice of public hearing shall be provided as required by Mass General Laws, chapter 40A, section 11, or take any action there too, and to be forwarded to the planning board for a public hearing. So I entertain a motion to approve that. So moved, second. And discussion. I have a question. Yes. Could you, oh, Dick Scott, uh, Rush Pond Road. Could you tell me um, where mixed use, which property mixed use we have? Just, that a Lake, just a Lakeville Hospital property. Okay, and if I read that or heard it properly, 
you're proposing putting a warehouse in mixed use the planning board is yes the planning board is planning on doing that okay if they're planning on putting warehouse in the mixed use that's an industrial use going into mixed use and i'm wondering why we're not just doing what's obvious um because the warehouse didn't go in under the dod you're now coming up with a mixed use where it seems to me it would be far more appropriate to make it a industrial zone as opposed to sliding in language that allows that use. This mixed zone district has been in fact since 2003. Yeah, I was there, I advocated for it. Well, okay, so. Yeah, but it did not include warehouses. Well. And distribution centers. It was very specific. It, it did include warehouses. Warehouses office. were included as an accessory use. That is correct. Yeah. To a manufacturing not a standalone i was there i, I went I, to all the meetings so okay. i know okay you'll that have that's... you'll have your chance and if my mark yeah. wants to say anything about you know why we're doing it um there's two things there's three things that are going to be done here mark knows they're going to have an informational meeting a couple of weeks from now so everybody understands what this all means okay and about the project and so forth and so on number one number two is i don't know when the hearing is mark you know the, the uh, hearings like that posted for October. October 27th. <laughs> yes. October 27th. so there'll be a public hearing on this if you if i may mr chair sure there'll be a public hearing for this at the planning board meeting on october 27th most likely here uh on october 19th we'll have an informational meeting about this at the library um, and i I don't think that anybody should be shocked. I think that, you know, we're doing what everybody asked and bring it to town meeting. No, I'm, I'm happy for it to go to town meeting. I don't understand why the use <clears throat> is being slipped under mixed use, whereas, whereas I've heard planning board members say that warehouse and distribution centers belong in industrial parks. And that's a quote from one of your board members. So I'm sitting back, understand, trying to understand why you're not just changing the zoning to the Lakeville Hospital to industrial to allow that use. Coming in this backdoor way it's not, does not seem, it, it, it is a backdoor not, way, it, it is. It, I'm sorry, you know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's Jay. a backdoor way. It's not if, a backdoor way. It's an industrial use going into a mixed use. That's not appropriate. I'm sorry. You're talking use and you're talking zoning. They're two different things. Okay, I guess we'll uh, talk about it at the next meeting. Um, yes, did you have a question, John? Yes, thank you. John Jenkins, Pickens Street. So side note, it's interesting to see that the planning board can comment on that gentleman, but can't comment on my question. Don't get that, but just as a side note. You want him to comment on your question? Go ahead. No, he told me he couldn't do it, so let's stick to the rules. My, okay, we'll stick to the my, rules. There's no further comment, okay, if that's what you want. I mean, Mark is trying to... I, I would speak to that. Yeah, yeah. he'll speak to it. If you want. I think you've spoken poorly about me in the past, and I, was, I think you're disrespectful to me, so I didn't gratify your question with a response. That's what you got. Thanks for your comment. This, I guess I'm just trying to understand the process that's being followed here and the previous gentleman sort of alluded to some of it. it it seems to me if i understand it right is one let's get rid of the dod let's get that article out of the town laws or whatever if i'm using the right words let's get that out of the town laws so that can't be abused but i guess isn't that what everybody wanted uh if i can speak to that no we really just wanted it if it was going to be applied that it went to a town meeting and got a two-thirds approvement from the town voters and then the dod would go through and the special permits could be issued and the planning board could do their thing but that wasn't done that way we we were never given the right to vote it was just determined to be done a different way and now that we're gonna pull the DOD out of the town articles, so it can't be applied, we're now gonna go back into what's called mixed use. Uh, Development district has been there for, since 2003. Yeah, I got it. Right, which is, makes sense to me, but we're gonna go into that that's been here since 2000 and whatever, and we're gonna say, 
I'd like to add some other words to this. And one word I'd like to add is warehouse. And another word is a distribution center. And it's like, well, if we do that, and, and what you said was, the only property in town is the Lakeville Hospital that's in mixed use, then we're basically gonna say, great, there's no DOD, the court threw it out anyway, we'll worry about the appeals, and now they can put up a warehouse, and it doesn't need a two-thirds vote. Am I misinterpreting what's happening, or is this exactly what's happening right now? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, John, you're totally confusing me because you have sued the planning board because of the DOD district, right? You because have sued of the, the application. You, you have sued it, right? You sued them, They were correct? They were mentioned in the suit. Okay, well, they were. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. it was there. It was the, the, against them, okay? So I guess I'm a little confused here because on one hand, you're saying that the DOD district is not correct, right? No, sir. They say what, it's okay. Yeah, what was really said was the application of the DOD was done incorrectly. Not the DOD itself, the application was done incorrectly. What application? That it was townwide as opposed to a specific area. But it was townwide. Well, there's where the judge argued with everybody and, and ruled in our favor. Well, they didn't rule in your favor that there was nothing wrong with the DOD district. What they ruled was that they we didn't have targeted areas. Correct. That that so the DOD district was fine, but we didn't have targeted areas. So there's two different things here. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm a little confused as to why you would continue with the DOD district. Well, I, it's not my decision. The planning well, board and select board and whatever are making the decision to say, let's get that article off the, the laws of the town. Let's just get rid of it. And oh, by the way, let's change the multi-use zoning so that the facility that was in question will now meet the building specs and they can go forward. Well, first of all, there was a committee of nine people, the, the 43D committee, Mm -hmm. Nine of us, okay, unanimously voted to put that warehouse there, number one. The planning board unanimously as a group. The conservation commission unanimously as a group. The board of health, the selectmen, you know, approved it as well. So we all thought it was a great project. And we still think it might be a great project. Maybe there's some modifications that may be required. Mm -hmm. But you have a piece of property there okay 30 years okay you know what john as well as i do we've had multiple people own those buildings okay here we are today in the exact same situation so i think the planning board is acting correctly mm -hmm. to try to see if we can resolve this issue and move this thing forward mm -hmm. that's it and it's going to be up like you said it's going to be up to the voters to decide if they want to move ahead with that and if they don't, then we're really going to have a problem on our hands. Well, actually, the problem will result back to the owners of the property. They're the ones that are responsible for it, not the town. Uh, well, I'm not going to get into that debate, but the town is not responsible for it. That is correct. I, we're in agreement. Again, we're in agreement. But, you know, I think you think something should be done with that property. I know I do. I mean, that's that's. A I, I don't think anyone in town would argue that that something should be done with the property. I think all the, the pushback, the arguments, the litigation have to do with the process of getting it done. Uh, I'm sorry, you're confusing me. Are you, do you support a warehouse going there? Do I support a warehouse? Yeah. I personally wouldn't vote for a warehouse, no. Okay, what would you vote for? Well, I don't know, I haven't given that any thought. I'd go spend a couple hundred thousand dollars and do a research on a strategy and come up with some ideas. But that's not my decision or my choice. That's really the owners of the property choice. You know, I understand it's their choice. Right. But if they have very limited options, okay? They have all the options in the world. Okay. One of them is a warehouse. And you know what, Rich, you know as well as I do, 10 years ago, the town went crazy when you tried to put, when they tried to put a warehouse in and you had the biggest town meeting in the history of the town and it, 
clearly was voted down. Then, and now then, here we are here again, we are. and we're maneuvering to put in a warehouse we're, again, we're, no matter what you call it. You're line, John. We're not maneuvering anything. What the planning board is doing is giving the townspeople, like Dick Scott has said many times, and mm -hmm. you have said many times, mm -hmm. the opportunity to decide what they want to do. And if they don't want to do it, mm -hmm. the consequences are huge. Huge. Yeah. Huge. So <clears throat> that's okay. So when 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 we heard the DOD was gonna be pulled, I thought, why would anyone pull the DOD? Are they embarrassed? Are they mad? Are they afraid they're gonna be sued? I now understand why. In in my opinion, why do you I'll understand, stop talking. Why do you understand why? Because when you look at it <laughs> when you look at a DOD and you try to pass it and you follow the law, you need a two thirds majority in a town meeting to apply the DOD. That's the way it was written. Now if we get rid of that, we come this way. Now we only need a 50% approval. So we're, we're making it much easier to you put a warehouse in. Th you need two thirds, John. Still it's a zoning change. change. Mm -hmm. change. Two so thirds. Two thirds change. For the warehouse? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the mixed use? Yeah. All right, I stand corrected. Okay. Can I ask a question? Thank you. You're welcome. You go up here, please. I didn't get an answer as to why we're not going industrial for uh, you take it to the planning the when the when the planning board has the public hearing you can review what the planning but it's board too it's, late. it's Robert, not put the warrant it's on. not his decision to make okay now, wait a minute now wait a minute wait, it's how, not how his decision this come forward then? the planning board the planning board voted on last thursday but where did the article come from the planning board you guys wrote it we discussed it with council uh you wrote it not rhino Town Council wrote it. Town Council wrote this without input from the owner of the property? Is that what you're telling me? Wait a minute. Is that what you're telling Wait a me? Hold on a second. First of all, you sued the town and you still um, in an in appeal for Yeah, the that's called a Hail Mary. The appeal is well, a Hail whatever Mary. Whatever the hell it is. The reason the DOD is important is because you had the Lakeville Country Club jockeying okay to put another warehouse down there that's why the dod is going away i understand that part what i don't understand is why you're putting an industrial use on the lakeville property when it's currently zoned mixed use and not going straight forward to industrial use and i want to know who wrote that article tell me town council yep with no input from the owner the chairman of the uh no uh, input from the owner i'm gonna talk to them too oh so it does have input from the owner all right we're, we've had enough here okay you've had enough but i haven't okay the problem that we've got rich is i've been approached by rhino to meet with them to discuss this project in advance of that public hearing yeah okay i don't trust that the town will protect the abutters. And I have ample evidence that I can articulate for you. And therefore, I am gonna lead the charge against this article because I think it's fraudulent. I think it's connived. If you go in dust, if you want an up-down vote, which we all wanted, then you do it the right way, up-down vote. You don't sneak it through this bullshit where Rhino writes it. Town Council Rhino was did not write it. Of a public hearing. That is not true. It is true. Who told you that? I know it's true because I've been approached yeah, why, directly why, with Rhino. Why do you think you've been approached? Because I'm in opposition to no, it and I will be charged. Because there's, there's a suit pending with you and the planning board. No, there's two suits. <laughs> That's correct. Well, yeah, everybody thinks that's funny. It's not funny at all. You're damn right it's not funny because it cost us a shitload of money to get our right treatment and we still haven't gotten it. I'm sorry. That's between you and Rhino. Rich, it's not let's, the, not, let's not go back to where this Have, I, have we ever had any discussion with you or anybody? Yes, you did. About, yes, I'm sorry. Did. Hold on a second. Have we had any discussion with you or John Jenkins and the other people having to do with the lawsuit? No, you're not allowed to. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Brent. What are the consequences? Consequences could be massive housing there. Could the town be sued if we kept blocking industrial? No. Um, okay. Can I just speak to that real quick? Sure. So 
<coughs> if we don't make, and I know Mr. Scott doesn't like this, those zoning changes, if you actually read through that, there are protections in there for the buffer zones that make it industrial buffer zones. And the town would not make this change without a performance guarantee from the developer to guarantee that all of the conditions would be held to from the original special permit that was appealed. If we don't make these changes, they own that property. There are by right uses that they can do that put them with a warehouse 20 feet from your property. Not without a zoning change. Nope, as we, you just agreed to it. Not that, without a zoning change. You can't use it as an industrial warehouse. I'm not entirely, zoned not entirely, industrial. but you can use it as an accessory use. You admitted that. So only if it's manufacturing. So what if they do that? That's okay. That is not a distribution big box warehouse. Right. So what you're saying is that an industrial zone, please. I'm sorry. That's so right. what he's saying is that an industrial zone would have less protections than this written mixed use industrial. No, the, the current mixed use zoning yes. has less protections than the changes we've made to this bylaw. But you can't put warehouses in the current. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Well, you, 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 can, you can put a warehouse in as an accessory use. Yes to a primary use. So there can be a warehouse. And that, not a mega so warehouse. So if you said that you had, uh, all that can be up for debate. We should talk about that at public hearing. Uh, just using as a, for, for instance, I discussed this with uh, the zoning enforcement officer, that if, let's just say, using a hypothetical, if Ocean Spray went in there as their world headquarters, we all know it's right up the road, it's a beautiful building, they could put their headquarters there as offices mm -hmm. and they could also put a warehouse there. And that warehouse could be 20 feet from someone's house. Yep. 20 however, feet from the lot line. However, with these adjustments, there would be more of a buffer. Yep. There's a hundred foot buffer in the mixed use. The mixed use, I know, because the chairman of the All right, this is, uh, this yeah. is uh, no. I, I think okay, the frustration, I think it's here is just, because now we have to worry about industrial and mixed use rezones as opposed to just industrial. So it's just something to bear in mind. It's not slipping it under the rug, but it is it's, just another uh, thing. It's too late to do industrial. And it is a 20 foot buffer. Okay. Um, so if anybody uh, has any further questions or want something answered, you just please send an email to uh, the town administrator and we'll do the best we can to uh, respond to your question. But, um, okay, so where are we here? So we, we got a second? Vote on it. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, I'm referred to vote it to the planning board for a public hearing. Okay, next is to see if the town will vote the. Uh, Rezoning of 155 acres located on County Street as shown on the attached map entitled Zoning Amendment Plan of the Land of Lakeville from residential to industrial to take any action there too and forward to the Planning Board for a public hearing. So moved. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, I have the map there. For yep. okay. Um, uh, I'll ask the CPC again whether they want to stay on. I'm sorry. You guys want to stay? You're supposed to be going to the Park Commission meeting. Um, well, we're, at 7.15, we're scheduled to go to the Parks Department. Okay. I know Mike's good. It's meeting at 7. Okay. Uh, what did I do? Did I vote that one? Yep. Thank you. So we're on page eight. Page eight. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. It's not going to come before 715. We should go. It's, I mean, the parks department uh, will wait for us if it's not going to be now. Uh, we got, uh, we got at least a half a dozen more articles, so you know, we'll come a couple of them will like it. Okay. I'll I'll okay. Uh, to see if the town will vote to amend zoning bylaws by adding section 2.0 definition reusable materials or equipment 
used yard maintenance equipment, tools, carports, construction materials, um, metal, uh, furniture, excluding farm equipment. On the residential property on outdoor storage or reusable materials or equipment shall be kept in one area that shall not exceed 500 square feet. The, uh, the storage area shall be screened from view from street abutting uh, properties. No reusable materials or equipment shall be stored in the front yard, whether screened or not. And to be forward to the planning board for a public hearing. So moved. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next one is to see if the town will vote to amend the zoning bylaws section 4.0 use regulations by adding to section 4.1.2 business uses license junk dealers um, uh, not allowed in residential allowed in business and not allowed in industrial or industrial b so make a motion to approve this article so we'll second uh, and forward to the planning board for public hearing all those in favor aye aye, aye. next is uh, an article to uh, amending the current uh, general bylaw for junk old metals or secondhand articles to include language mandating junk dealers show commercial activity annually as required by the license renewal section five a holder of a license is required to to prove the license is being utilized for an active business the required leisure book shall include the multiple sales of junk kept on premises and are conducted in six months of every 12 month licensing licensing period the book shall be presented to the select board prior to the issuance of a new license. A motion to put it on the uh, warrant. So moved. Second, I have a question. Yes. Isn't this the same book that um, should be showed to, can't the police chief ask to see this book or something like that? It's my understanding, Christina, that doesn't this come from, isn't that a requirement of the town clerk too? I think in the original bylaw, doesn't it say that there has to be a book that they keep anyways? Uh, yes. Um, I'm not aware of the police department being able to request it, but um, the clerk's office can request yes. it. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, where are we? And our, our next article is an article amending the current bylaw for... Next one. Next one, thank you. Um, to see if the town will vote to accept the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 58, to authorize the town to assess municipal charges laying on any real property in the town for the following types of municipal fees and charges that have not been paid by their due date or take any action relative thereto. Charges, penalties, fines, uh, including interest on all costs to record such liens in, in the Plymouth County of Deed assessed in accordance with the following provisions are not paid on the due date. Uh, constitute lien on the real property as assessed. Uh, number one is um, any provision of section the uh, five of the general uh, bylaws, uh, any provision in the town zoning bylaws any bylaw statute regulation enforced and administrated by the Board of Health, any bylaw statute reg regulation enforced or administered by the Conservation Commission, any bylaw statute or regulation enforced or administrated by the Building Inspector, any bylaw statute or regulation enforced or administered by the Fire Department, any bylaw statute or regulation enforced um, administered by the Department of Public Works, any bylaw statute regulation enforced or administered by the Zoning Board of Appeals, and any bylaw statute regulation enforced or administered by the Planning Board. Uh, municipal charges lien authorized under the section shall take effect on the recording of the list of unpaid municipal charges and fees by parcel of the land and by the name of the person assessed uh, for the charge, charge or the fee in the registry of uh, deeds, the county or district where the land subject to lien lies. 
If the charging fee, which is secured by admissible charges, liens remains unpaid when the assessors are preparing the real estate to action and warrant to um, municipal charge or fee of the town collector of taxes, if applicable on a section 38, a chapter 41, shall certify such charge or fees for the assessors who have forthwith any charge, any fee or tax on property, which relates to and commit with the warrant of the collector of taxes as, as part of such tax. If the property to which the um, charge or fee uh, relates to its tax exempt, such charge or fee shall be committed to the tax. Uh, the lien under this section shall be discharged by filing a certificate from the tax collector and all municipal charges or fees constituting the lien, together with any interest and costs therein have been paid legally abated. All costs of recording or discharging a lien under this section shall be borne by the owner of the property. Contain a motion to approve. Second. Uh, the uh, the reason for some of these articles is to try to deal with um, some of the uh, properties that uh, need to be fined and cleared up, uh, cleaned up, and they haven't been cleaned up, and this gives us the tools to, to do that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 See if the town will vote to transfer the care, the custody, and control of the parcels land identified acquired by the town tax for foreclosure from the, <coughs> from the treasurer collector for purposes of sale, auction, to the select board for purposes of conveyance and for general uh, purposes and to authorize the select board to convey such parcels on such term and conditions as board may deem appropriate. Such parcels are described below and uh, to take any action there too. So there's uh, six pieces of property that uh, have been foreclosed on and with the town meeting will give the approval for the town to uh, auction those off um, with the understanding that uh, this really is for people that are adjacent to this. This is not for people to build new houses on. Uh, did somebody move that? I will. Thank you. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, article to see if the town vote to accept the visions of Mass Journal Laws, Chapter 148, Section 26H, to require that every lodging house or boarding house shall be protected throughout an adequate system of automatic sprinklers in accordance with the provisions of the state building code and to accept all provisions of the Mass General Laws, Chapter 148, Section 26I, to require that any building herein constructed or herein hereafter substantially rehabilitated as to constitute an equivalent of a new construction and occupied in whole or in part of the residential purposes containing lot not less than four dwellings units included, but not limited to lodging houses, boarding houses, fraternity houses, dormitories, apartments, townhouses, condominiums, hotels, uh, motels, group businesses shall be equipped with the, the uh, system of automatic sprinklers in accordance with the provisions of the state building code for the purpose of the statutes, boarding, lodging houses defined as a building with six or more persons living together, not within the second degree or kindred. Second degree kindred means a father, mother, son, son, sister, son, daughter, spouse, grandparent, grandchild, brother, or sister-in-law, or son, a daughter-in-law, father, uh, mother-in-law, step, step father, stepmother, stepsister, stepbrother, stepson, stepdaughter, I take any relative there to obtain a motion to put on the warrant. So, second. Uh, the reason why, you know, this is being put on, this gives the uh, fire chief the, the clout to make sure that the sprinkler systems are installed uh, at some of these uh, facilities. All in favor? I say all that. Uh, we motioned. Okay. We motioned. Yeah. All those I in favor? It. Yeah, aye. Aye. All right. Next, to see if the town will vote to accept the layout of Ledgewood Drive as a public way, as therefore laid out by the select board and shown on the plan entitled Roadway Acceptance Plan Ledgewood Estates on Ledgewood Drive in Lakeville, Massachusetts, dated August 28, 2020, prepared by Outback Engineering Incorporated and to authorize the select board to acquire by purchase, gift, or intimate domain the fee to, the, to or easements of such roadway for the purpose of such public way are in Lakeville and any access draining, drainage, utility, and other easements incidental or related there to take any action there too. Maintain a motion. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, it's been long. I know. I'm not going to help. Pardon me? I'm not going to help. 
Uh, you want to read it? Go ahead. <laughs> I'll take a drink of water. All right. This next article um, was sub submitted by the town clerk. Proposed by the town clerk to see if the town will vote to authorize the select board to petition the general court for special legislation as set forth below to change to position of town clerk from an elected position to a position appointed by the select board. Provided, however, that the general court may make clerical or editorial um, changes of form only to the bill unless the select board approves amendments to the bill before enactment by the general court which are within the scope of the general public objectives of the petition or take any other um, action relative thereto. The petition for special legislation shall take the following form. An act relative to the position of town clerk in the town of Lakeville be enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives in general court assembled and by the authority of the same as follows. Section one, notwithstanding section one of chapter 41 of the general laws or any other general or special law, rule or regulation to the contrary, there shall be a town clerk for the town of Lakeville. The town clerk shall have all the powers, perform the duties and be subject to the liabilities and penalties now or hereafter conferred and imposed by law on town clerks. The town clerk shall be appointed and may be removed after the opportunity for a hearing by the select board of the town. The select board may establish an employment contract subject to annual appropriation with the town clerk for salary, fringe benefits, and other conditions of employment, including, but not limited to, severance pay, reimbursement for expenses incurred in the performance of the duties of the office, liability insurance and conditions of discipline, termination, dismissal, reappointment, performance standards, and leave. Section two, upon the effective date of this act, the elected office of town clerk shall be abolished and the term of the incumbent of such office terminated. Notwithstanding the foregoing, the elected incumbent holding the office of town clerk on the effective date of this act shall continue to hold such office and perform the duties of that office until the expiration of the term for which the town clerk was elected, unless he or she sooner vacates such office or until a new clerk, town clerk is appointed by the select board in accordance with section one of this act. Section three, no contracts or liabilities in force on the effective date of this act shall be affected by the abolition of the elected office of town clerk or the creation of the appointed office and the appointed town clerk shall in all respects be the lawful successor, successor of the office so abolished. All records, property and equipment of the offices of the elected town clerk shall be assigned to the office of the appointed town clerk. And then section four, this act shall take effect upon its passage. Did you make a motion? That was my motion. Okay. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Aye. Do you want to do the next one? Or do you want to sure, do the next I'll one? Sure, I'll do the next one. This next article was proposed by petition um, to see if the town, so I guess this will be my motion too, to see if the town will vote to authorize the select board to petition the general court for special legislation to provide the re for recall of officials elected solely by the voters of Lakeville and further to authorize the general court to make changes of form only to such legislation unless approved by select board prior to enactment and further to authorize the board to approve such changes as within the public purposes of this petition or take any other action relative thereto subject to the above stated rights of the general court and the select board to make certain changes the proposed le special legislation shall include the following provisions re relative to the recall of elected town officials. Recall of an elected town official. A, recall description. One, any holder of an elected office in the town of Lakeville may be recalled therefrom by registered voters of the town as here and after provided. Two, the recall of an elected official will consist of a three-step process. Three, an initial recall affidavit shall not be filed against an officer within three months of the officer's 
of the officer takes office or within three months of the term. Under B, which is the initiation of the recall affidavit, and that's the step one of the affidavit. One, any 100 registered voters of the town of Lakeville may initiate a recall petition by filing an affidavit with the town clerk. Number two, the select board may appoint a temporary interim town clerk to handle the recall process and election should the town clerk be elected, be the elected official subjected to the recall. C, the petition, step two of the petition. One, if the affidavit process has been co completed in compliance with the requirements of section B of this chapter, the town clerk shall provide a su sufficient number of copies of petition blanks demanding such recall. Printed forms of printed forms of which shall be kept on hand to the voters who meet the affidavit. The blank shall be issued by the town clerk and bear the clerk's signature and official <coughs> seal. They shall be dated and addressed to the select board and shall contain the names of all persons to whom issued the number of blanks so issued, the name of the person sought to be recalled and shall de demand the election of a successor to such office. Two, such blanks must be provided within five town hall business days during regular business hours. Three, said recall petition shall be returned and filed with the town clerk on the 28th day after the requesting voter receives the blank petitions from the town clerk. Number four, in the event that the town hall is not open on the 28th day, the petition may be filed during normal business hours on the next town hall business day. Number five, the petition before being returned and filed shall be signed by 200 qualified voters of the town. Every signature must be accompanied by the signer's place of residence, given the street and number. And six, within five working days of receipt of the recall petition sheets, the town clerk shall submit the recall petition sheets to the Board of Registrars of Voters, and the Board of Registrars of Vot Voters shall verify the number of signatures which are names of registered voters of the town. D, the recall election, which is step three, the recall election. One, if the petition shall be found and certified by the registrars, registrars of voters, I think it's supposed to be registrar of voters, but registrars of voters, to be sufficient, the town clerk shall forthwith submit it with the certificate of, to the select board. The select board shall forthwith give written notice to said official of the receipt of said certificate. And if the official sought to be removed does not resign within seven calendar days, shall order an election to be held on a day fixed by them, not less than 45 days, no more than 60 days after the date of the town clerk's certificate that a sufficient petition is filed. <coughs> However, if any other town of election is to occur within 90 days after the date of said certificate, the select board may, at their discretion, postpone the holding of the recall election to the date of such other election. If a vacancy occurs in said office after a recall election has been so ordered, the election shall nevertheless proceed as in the section provided. Number two, the nomination of other candidates, the publication of the warrant for the recall election in the, um, in the conduct of the nomination and publication shall all be in accordance with the law relating to elections unless otherwise provided in this act. Number three, the ballots used in election, recall election shall contain the following propositions. For the recall of the, the name of the officer, against the recall of the name of the officer. Adjunct, I can't even see that word. Jason. Jason, my goodness, my eyes, your voice. Um, to each proposition, there shall be a place to mark a vote. Following the propositions shall appear the word candidates with directions to voters as required by section 42 of chapter 54 of the general laws. Beneath the word candidates shall appear the names of candidates nominated as provided in this act. Adjacent to the name of the, each candidate shall be a place to mark a vote. So E, duties of the incumbent. One, the incumbent shall continue to perform the duties of his or her office until the recall election. 
Two, if the official is not recalled, he or should she continue in the office for the remainder of his or her unexpired term, subject to recall as before, as provided in this act. Under F, the voting results. If a majority of the votes cast upon the question of recall are in favor of recall, the officer shall be recalled and the votes for the candidate <coughs> shall be counted. Two, in the instance the candidate receiving the highest number of votes shall be declared elected for the open office. Three, if less than a majority of the votes cast are in favor of recall, the votes for candidates shall not be counted. Four, if the, if the official is recalled in the recall election, he or she shall be deemed removed upon the election of his or her successor who should hold office during the unexpired time term. And number five, if the successor fails to take office within five days after receiving notification of his or her election, the incumbent shall thereupon be deemed removed in the office vacant. G, candidates to succeed the elected official. One, any elected official sought to be recalled may not be a candidate to succeed himself or herself. Two, the nomination of candidates the publication of the warrant for the recall election and the conduct of the same shall all be in accordance with the provisions of law relating to elections unless otherwise provided by this act. H, appointment of recalled or resigned, resigned official. One, any person who has been removed from an office or who has resigned from office while recall proceedings were pending against him or her shall not be appointed to any office within four years of such removal or such resignation. Two, in the case of an officer subject to a recall election and not recalled, a new recall affidavit shall not be filed against that officer until at least three months have elapsed after the election at which the previous recall was submitted to the voters of the town. And I, the effective date, this act shall take effect upon passage. Second. Discussion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Leah, you can take this next one. My voice is kind of dead. Uh, so I believe this is the last one we have, correct? Yes. Uh, to see if the town will vote to petition the general court for special legislation, notwithstanding chapter 43B section 13 of the general laws or any general or special law to the contrary. Section one, notwithstanding any general or special law to the contrary, the number of members on the Lakeville Select Board shall be increased from three to five. The Select Board shall annually elect a chairperson from among its members. Section two, at the first ballot election to occur following the effective date of this act, three select board members shall be elected. The candidate receiving the highest number of votes in that election shall serve a three year term. The candidate receiving the second highest number of votes <coughs> shall serve a two year term. The candidate receiving the third highest number of votes shall serve a one year term. Thereafter, as the terms of select board members expire, successors shall be elected for terms of three years. Section three, this act shall take effect upon its passage. This was submitted by petition. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All of those. It's gonna be a long night. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, uh, what do we got here? Next on the agenda is a joint meeting with the uh, Community <laughs> Preservation Committee to discuss the implementation of the Community Preservation Act. Um, Madam Chair, I think uh, yeah. you all you're, sure. So you, you already called your meeting to order. You all set. Okay. <clears throat> Madam Chair, um, 
can we just ask the name so Tracy yep. can get it in a minute, please? Okay, we'll start on the end. Michelle McEachern. Amy Knox. Nancy Yates. Okay. Um. It's just if we're all still awake. <laughs> I'm sorry I bored you, but we got no choice. <laughs> it's it's okay. it is. <laughs> well, it had it's so points zoning. of excitement. It's so zoning on. <laughs> but, so, um, I guess what we requested, um, you know, to have this meeting was that it seems like at times we're not all on the same page. And we all want to be on the same page. We support this. You know, I voted for it. I voted for it three times, by the way. So people say, oh, he didn't vote for it. I voted for it three times. So I'm in support of it. But I, I do think that, you know, there's been some missteps here that we need to clarify and get straightened out, you know, going forward, okay? Now, you've only had uh, three meetings, okay? The first meeting was really to organize the committee. And then they... Uh, Next one, I don't know what was on there. And the meeting on September 13th was supposed to be training only. But it didn't turn out that way. And that's disappointing. Because, you know, one of the members violated the open meeting law big time. And shouldn't have done that. The town clerk's not happy about that. Because the attorney general is all over this stuff now. Not only can you be removed, you can be fined. And they're taking it very seriously. And we've sent out, she has sent out a number of emails, you know, to everybody. And you get a booklet of all the committees and what you're supposed to do and what you're responsible for. We just can't tolerate that from happening. It's just not right. And then at the same time, you didn't have full members, you know, there at that meeting to vote on it. And it's, you know, something that uh, I'm sorry. I, I just don't think it's the right thing to do. So that's number one. Number two is that we have a number of staff members that have already been trained in CPC. They've done it. Christina was involved in New Bedford. She was responsible in New Bedford. Mark has been, the town planner has responded in Foxborough and a couple of other places. And the town of Todd, the accountant, has experience with other towns as well. The treasurer does, you know, too. And we're trying to help and sometimes we're getting pushback, you know, as to what we need to do. And we shouldn't be getting that pushback because they are the ones that are, that are creating the, um, all the financial information. Whatever the financial information is, it was from the Board of Assessors, from the town accountant, from the treasurer. It is what it is and it can't change. It gets certified by the Department of Revenue and it gets certified not only by the treasurer, town accountant but also gets certified you know by our auditors so those numbers aren't going to change so there's no debating about the numbers it is what it is you know i was at one of the meetings and uh, one of the members said well somebody was complaining about the tax bill okay not the cpc responsibility you send them to the board of assessors or send them to the treasurer and they'll try to answer those questions so that's not in your area you shouldn't be doing that you should tell the people if they have a problem with the tax bill or whatever, they should go to the, the uh, assessor's office or the treasurer's office. They'll try to clarify it as best they can. So, uh, and it just seems like at times, you know, we hear about the coalition, you know. The coalition is not a state agency, okay? It's not a state agency. They are uh, a lobbyist. That's basically what they are. And so I've seen emails, you know, they're not supposed to be according to the emails they send. They're not supposed to be giving advice to the, to the committee. They're not supposed to be giving legal opinions to the committee. And so I don't understand why we're having this problem and trying to, you know, move forward with this because we have the staff, we have the experience and, you know, the article that you know I voted I voted to put on 
really isn't required right now because there's nothing you can do until next year's midtown meeting. So I don't understand what the big deal is. I would have rather seen us get the numbers certified by the Board of Assessors and that would automatically, through the town accountant, get put into the, those reserve accounts automatically. So I don't understand what the big deal about that, but that certainly would became a big issue. Um, now, as far as the administrative, you know, expenses are concerned, um, any any salary or employee that's going to be hired, ha potentially be hired. I don't know how you do that for eighty-seven hundred dollars, but. Um, it has to be approved and presented to the uh, HR department, has to be presented to the wage and personal board, and it has to be approved by them. So you just can't go up and say, I'm going to go hire this person. You know, we can't do that. We are providing, the town is providing all the services from secretarial services, um, whatever, legal services. We're not even charging you back, you know, for that. We could, but we're not going to. So. It's too bad that we have disagreement here on certain things when we're doing the opposite. We're provided the resources. We haven't charged you for anything. We could, but we're not going to, okay? So I guess those are some of the concerns, you know, that I have. And the other thing that um, I, I, I did review your draft plan and, you know, and according to the bylaw, it's supposed to be studied over a, a period of time, and, and all of a sudden, in three meetings, we have a, a draft plan, you know, copying and pasting, and all these other boards. It's right in the bylaw that says they should participate in, in, in this discussion about reviewing it and so forth. And there's, I looked at it, and there's a lot of mistakes that are in there that need to be corrected. So, you know. Just trying to do it correctly. And I, I've looked at other plans as well, you know, because I assume that you're going to ask the Board of Selectmen to look at it too, but you haven't. But, you know, I mean, I think you should do that because it talks about a number of committees that you should look at right in the bylaw itself. So, I mean, that's a factor. The other thing that um, I think is important to understand, the CPC members, cannot be out there soliciting people to put applications in. Does everybody understand that? Do you understand that, Michelle? Excuse me? Do you understand that? Why everybody? are you asking me? I'm asking everybody. She nodded her head. Does everybody understand that? Have you solicited anyone? Why would I solicit? <laughs> Why are you asking me? Well, you know, I'm saying the CPC <laughs> members cannot solicit applications for CPC money, right? Right? Right. 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 So you can't go out there and say, oh, there's somebody here who got a piece of land or whatever. I want to ask them if they want to sell their land. I want to ask, you know, the historical commission, you know, why don't we do this and do that? You can't do that because you're prejudicing yourself. We're well aware of that. And I, I think it's think been, ex done that's that. actually been explained during our meeting. And honestly, to address some of your issues, you know, you attended along with uh, Mark Resnick, one of our meetings, and there was misinformation shared by yourself and Mark. And there was training offered, and you had well over a month to get town staff available, and that was turned down. And you said that Mark Resnick was gonna reach out to Stuart and get the training for the st town staff. And that still hasn't happened, has it? Well, so I think what needs to happen is that training that was offered needs to happen because that would help clear up any of the questions that you guys might have. I don't have any questions. I attended the well, first you, you hour. Did. You I, questioned I attended why we needed to do the budget. I, that, I was, that was explained point, point, of order. Early. point of order. I, I extend, I, you sent me an email about the training, okay? Me. No. Yes, you did. Mr. Chair, point of order. I do believe Nancy Yates is the chair. Okay, so. I'm sorry. No, that's, that's okay. Um, couple no. of, can I just go back? Well, I want to talk about the training because okay. the training, according to the email that I got, was for CPC members only, not for staff. Staff was invited, and it was extended to Ari. I don't think so. I, I could pull the email up on my phone because I remember getting it. You know, so Please do it, it did. It, it extended the invitation to staff, and then when you attended the meeting, you said that you were going to have the staff meet at a different time. You said that Mr. Resnick was going to reach out to the coalition directly. Well, I think he should be going to the chairman, chairperson. Excuse me. Oh, one second is 
going back to the meeting where we organized, where we voted to have the training. I have to say, I did not realize there were two trainings, one for staff and one for CPC. I thought that uh, training was just for the committee. It wasn't until after the fact that I realized that there were two trainings. And so I think it kind of went awry from there because we didn't, I don't, I did not personally send you an invitation to come to the training because I didn't really know you were invited. So it was. Uh, Michelle sent me the email. Right. And then I responded. I don't, and I said, I don't believe I did. I think I sent it to Ari. I, Maybe Ari. Sure. Uh, uh, Mr. Want. Chairman, can I, I'll just weigh in. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. So I did speak with Stuart. The training that he offers is almost the exact same training that he gave to the committee. Um, the people who we suggested that would attend would be the town accountant, myself and Ari, and um, Ari and, as well as Christina, and, and all three of them were previously involved in other CPC uh, in other communities. So, um, you know, it didn't um, seem that it was necessary to have Stuart come down for the exact same training. Mr. Chairman, just to state for the record, so I did receive an email from Michelle on August 11th um, offering the training on September 13th at 5 p.m. And I told her that the board was scheduled to meet on the 13th, so I'm not sure it'll be available. However, I'll pass it along, which I did. Um, and uh, at which point, and I copied you, Mr. Chairman, you said you want to attend the meeting. Please provide dates before you schedule the meeting in the future. And then Michelle responded that they can reschedule just as just an invite to the training session. I will say for the record, just to reinforce what Mark said, Christine and I and Todd have all attended Stuart Saginaw's training in the past. Um, it was maybe when it was when New Bedford was five years ago, five or six years ago. Five, six. All right, seven years ago. Seven years ago. Okay, seven. time time flies as you get older. Um, so we have we have attended that training ourselves. Okay, that's all I have to say. I'm trying okay. to. Okay. Uh, um, well, I just know, want to try. address a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> we're a brand new committee, and yes, we are still working it out. I personally am happy. I've been on many committees in my time and never have I had staff support before. Um, so I, I find that to be helpful, <laughs> even though we didn't really always get off on the right foot in the beginning, but we've worked it out because um, as a community, we're gonna have to work with everybody. And I think it's really important. And I think I've said this that you know, people that come before us with projects, we might not like them at all. They might have a beautiful piece of land, but maybe we don't like them. So we're gonna have to work with all kinds of people. So I think we're gonna have to work with the town. We're gonna have to work with applicants. Um, as far as the plan goes, we have not had on our agenda and never discussed that draft plan. We don't have, we haven't started the plan yet. We're working on a survey for- It was on your agenda. The discuss, plan discuss, itself? Yeah, it, it was. It we was never, we didn't get to it. Oh, we, there were, it might have been on the agenda, but there were several things on the agenda we didn't get to <clears throat> that night because it went lengthy on other things. It took us an hour and a half just to get together on the survey. So there, it was on the agenda, but we never discussed it. We said we'd move it forward to another meeting um, and we never have gotten there yet. Mm -hmm. So we have not started the plan. We worked on the survey, took a long time. Um, hopefully we're getting the end of it for at the uh, Parks Commission tonight. Um, we're working on a survey and we're working on handouts for the festival, the arts festival. There'd be a lot of people from Lakeville there. And we thought it was really important to get the survey done. That's a great, you're not gonna have that kind of people together all at one place to be able to talk to. So we have, we're gonna have a booth and we're gonna have the survey and we're gonna pass out a brochure. We're gonna to talk to people, we're gonna answer their questions. So that's as far as we've gotten so far. We really haven't started the plan. And we still have only met with the Conservation Commission so far, one commission. We are supposed to meet with the Parks Commission tonight. Um, Mike is there and if they're still meeting, I'm gonna go over when I leave here, but I personally am happy to have staff support and um, hopefully 
there'll be room for us to have meetings where we can be on cable because I find it difficult to take notes. And there, I know that the town's short on people going to meetings to take notes. So um, I think we ought to probably get a good tape recorder if we're not gonna be on cable so that we can do it because I personally find it really hard to try to take notes while you're trying to interact at a meeting. So going forward, I, I don't know how anybody else feels, but I have, I've been working with the town for 20 years. <clears throat> Some of it's been good. You know, I don't have to tell you, some of it has been really good and some of it hasn't been probably quite as good. And I hope that we can all work together with the town because this is the best thing that's happened in a long time. I put it on, for, it, it failed twice, it finally passed. And some of the people on the committee got it passed and I think they're very passionate about how it's gonna go. But we're a committee of eight people and we're all gonna decide how it goes. And on some of the votes on some of the stuff, it has not been unanimous. So we're still working to get it out among ourselves, how it goes. The vote to put that budget forward was not unanimous. And I'm not even gonna go into that. I'm just saying it wasn't unanimous. So we are still trying to work it out within ourselves on some issues. But I plan on working with the town. I'm chairman, I'll work with the town. I've worked with the town for 20 years. And I think I've done all right. Mr. Chair, may yes. I? So the first thing that I wanna say is Nancy, you know, I respect you so very much. And I don't know if everyone here knows, but Nancy was the first woman to step up in this town and sit on, a, on the select board when it really wasn't a thing to do. So I respect you so much for that. I also know how much passion you have for the CPA. I know how hard you worked. And in Lakeville back then, it wasn't even that long ago, it just wasn't the right time. Folks thought that we were going to have, you know, open space forever. And now it's changed. The demographic has changed. There's a lot of young folks like my kids who are all about the environment. And, you know, my, my hope is that other young people get involved and can work, you know, can join some of these committees going forward. But I would ask your board to give you more than the benefit of the doubt on, on your leadership. I mean, you're not afraid of anything. At least if you are, I haven't found out what it is yet. Um, How do you, have you had You had the governor when he was here discussing our MVP grant work on the flooding, he was listening to your every word. You captivated him with your knowledge of this area. I think your board should give you more than an even average level of respect, whether that means, you know, asking you to put things on the agenda and discussing it, and, uh, you know, I was really excited when someone approached me the other day and said, hey, can't CPA funds be used for this? And I, I learned something new. I had to look it up real quick. And, um, and I said to that person, here's the channel that you have to go through. I directed them. And, you know, that to me was very exciting that people have already embraced the fact that we have CPA here. So, you know, um, it's something that I wanted to see for a long time and I want nothing but success from this committee, honestly, but you know, no one, uh, you're one of the hardest workers I know. So, you know, I, you. I'm, I'm glad that you're sitting in the chair position and I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, what the committee does. And I'm excited about the arts festival. That's a perfect opportunity for lots of people to come through to talk to. It's gonna rain. Don't say that. <laughs> I'm supposed to start till 2.30. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, yeah, go ahead. Um, so I didn't have any backup on this agenda. So it just basically says that we're here to discuss the implementation of the Preservation Act. Um, I applaud all of you for, um, you know, the work that you <coughs> did to get to this, you know, to this place. And I say all of you, it's the residents, it's, um, you know, the support of the initiative. Um, I'm a little uncomfortable here tonight because I feel like there's been more of a, um, 
I guess, a, like a scolding to, the, to this committee, and it's making me a little uncomfortable. Thank you. I appreciate that. So you think um, it's okay to violate the open meeting law? Well, no. Any one of us. I, you think position, it's okay to violate the open meeting law? Nobody should be op violating an open meeting law, but sometimes it happens not because it's on, intentional, in maybe purpose. because it's. On purpose, it happens. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I know. You know, you, you guys can laugh at this, but some of us have. Lorraine, we've received open meeting violations for not reading someone's address when we're doing licenses. Right, see, it happens, right? right? It does happen, and okay, it's not but intentional. That was someone's license that someone wrote to the attorney general. Can you imagine if someone files a complaint on a budget item that someone's done? In our bylaws, it says we follow Robert's rules of order. Right. And we actually, plain and simple. And we actually, if I'm not mistaken, we said it this evening that there is open meeting law training that um, will be conducted for you know for the staff and, and the elected officials. So um, I just want everybody to get off on the you know on the right foot and do the right thing. There's a lot of energy on this board as well as this board and. Um, I think that we can work together, but you guys are going to make your decisions. You're going to fall. You might stumble. You'll have your successes. Um, but again, I just I, I what didn't expect it. I just I'm just a little uncomfortable because I feel like we're scolding this committee that is just getting started, and we should be trying to encourage and you know work with them. And you know maybe it's a I don't know. We're trying. Okay. I just just wanted to say my piece. Does so anybody else would like to say something? I would. Go ahead. If I may. Yes, you may. So, Leah, to your question about the budget part, I don't know if you've had a chance to watch the training at all, but Stuart explained why we need to pass the budget now, because if we don't, we will not be able to touch the 2023 money until 2024, if we don't pass it now. And then I, in spring, to, to be, I have the whole divi department division of local services thing at home that I spread it cover to cover. And honestly, I, I watched Stuart's training. I was surprised that was actually recorded, but I watched, I watched it, and there almost wasn't anything that he said that wasn't in that division of local services, which is a state certified. It doesn't come from a lobbyist. That comes as the direction from the state. But I, I, I'm fine with you guys wanting to use him as guidance because he gives you the extra that the black and white paper doesn't. But I would like to just caution everybody that he's a lobbyist. But he also follows the OR and the state rules. So don't we? <laughs> I understand that. We do. We have people that are certified. We have town accountants. We have treasurers. We have the, the uh, board of people, board of assessors. They all follow the DOR rules, right. don't they? And so doesn't the coalition. Well, they have nothing to do with the town. Yeah, I, I think part of, part of the, what I kind of see from looking in is part of the issue is, is that he was advocating that you take a certain action. He was interfering with a process. That's his you don't thing. have to adopt the budget this year. He was advocating that you do. So he was doing more than just giving advice or giving, um, telling you what, what different choices are. And the difference between fiscal year 24 and the end of town meeting in the spring is six weeks. So you've only really gained six weeks. Right, but uh, once the tax rate is set in November and we don't pass this budget, we cannot touch that money until 2024. Yeah, fiscal year 2024. You couldn't touch starts, it anyway. But fiscal starts, year 2024 starts, starts July 1st, 2023. You have to go to town meeting in May to, to do that. Meeting. You can't touch that money between now and town right. meeting. Right, but if something happened to come up from November until the town meeting, say a piece of land came up and someone wanted to propose that the CP, CPA fund it, we could call a special town meeting. It, where, said, it, where said, it says, according to your application, which I just reviewed too, it says that the applications will be submitted as of November 15th, I believe the date is, somewhere in there, if that's what you guys decide, and it'll be put on the annual town meeting in May. That's what it says. It does, right? It, I, it does make some um, exceptions, I believe, in there as right. well. 
for special circumstances. Wayham did it. They called a special town meeting to purchase the um, Little Harbor with CPA funds, and it didn't come before the special town. Uh, it came before a special town meeting. They called one in January. We're just saying we're just trying to. And, and you know what? That's fine. But again, we have folks who no one is a more qualified town accountant than Todd Hassett. I'd be asking him all my questions before I ask anyone else just to gauge the answers I get from anyone else. So we really do have a great staff that, you know, can help with a lot of these questions. And, you know, I believe in the first organizational meeting, you know, there was a reference to we have to make sure we're getting our money from the town, almost as if to say, you're questioning, you know, the auditing that was process. Taken out of context, Leo. It's so not. It, it wasn't taken out of context. It has happened in other towns, just like Stuart had explained, and that's the only reason I mentioned it, is that we have to keep track of it because it has happened in other towns. And the and towns it was, that it's not happened the money, in the interest. The, right. But again, all this stuff, you're not supposed to go into these relationships you have to have some level of trust if you if you don't have level of trust in the town staff then you know i mean michelle the first thing you said was we have to make sure we get our money you said that publicly i didn't say it like that leah uh, okay what how did you I say i did not it? say it how like did you that? say it? i don't know i would have to go back and rewatch it but i okay. definitely said i'm we, pretty sure it's pretty close that we, to that we appointed okay. sue as treasurer and you know what to work with todd she you know reached what? out to him she hasn't heard back and so you're talking about communication. It goes two ways. Well, Todd happens to be on vacation for two weeks, so you know. No, well, this, it was this a month was ago, a long, at this least. Was but a long the, time is, the thing is, the thing is, that we have nothing to report right now. What are we going to report? The assessors there have not. There should be a monthly assess, report. We don't have March. anything to report. Oh, the tax. The first quarter hasn't been due yet. That has nothing to do with the quarter of the tax bill. It has to do with the certification. Of the of the taxes, but it has nothing to do with quarterly tax bills. CPC has nothing to do with that at all, does it? So you haven't collected any of the CPA money yet. No, well, we've co correct. We've collected the, the it's money coming in. It doesn't run on a cash flow basis, right? No. It, run, it, run, it runs. It runs on an annual basis based on the the, the certified, as you're saying, Rich. The certified and then there's the exemptions. Rate. The folks who have applied for the exemption, so they don't, you know. Well, I believe have on everybody's it. tax bill, it did break down the amount that was going to CPA. That's an estimate. Okay. No, on everybody's individual it's tax bill. It's estimate. still an estimate. Because the tax board of assessors have not right. certified the tax right. rate right. yet. First quarter is based on, based on basically the prior year's levy. First two quarters based on prior year's levy until the uh, the, the budget is. Um, uh, adopted well until it's not adopted, until the tax rate is, is approved the um and then the third and fourth quarters you recall your tax bill in the third and fourth quarter is always different than the tax bill in the first and second quarters because that's norming up the number based on the actual levy so now it'll be the same with cpa and everything else the, the, and the, it says it's an estimated tax bill there is an, having been an ex, uh, an, on the board of assessors for four years this is what i tell everyone there is nothing intuitive about assessing. You just have to know the laws and the rules on how it's done. And the best way to do that, go ask the assessors. You know, I mean, my, my point though also is, this is a new group. A lot of us were excited that this actually took place and to see some of the, you know, exchanges that have happened in the first couple meetings. Absolutely. I, I mean, absolutely. Uh, on absolutely. your own meeting yeah yeah absolutely. breaking the open meeting law and everything you know no not not at all actually not that part <laughs> so that doesn't upset you at all because i know you've done that um, several times well not several at least two times on big things that i know of so you know what's that wh what are you saying several you've times broken i said two times two times you've also broken the open meeting law 
and then uh, so you're referring to planning board yes. where there was a sort of yes. do you do you understand that you know Nancy shouldn't have to remind you at every single meeting that we operate under Robert's rules of order and can you tell right now that out of all the one two three four five six people here you're the most contentious can you not accept that um I am the recipient of quite a bit of nastiness from both of you and then Nancy what, herself. What have I said to you that's not so, true? Did you did you violate the open meeting law? It says clearly on the bottom of every agenda that there may be something else that comes up. So actually, it was in line with the agenda. Okay. And you I had brought it up that the it town was clerk has informed everybody that when she and the assistant town clerk came back from the state training this year, that anything under new or old business has to be posted on the agenda. I had brought it up at the prior meeting and Nancy shouted me down. She ignored it. She wouldn't accept it because it wasn't in writing in front of her. So what your next move should be is you ask her to put it on something. I and had then, during a public okay, meeting. Okay, Leah. well, and you can't vote that. What you have to do is vote to put it on your agenda. If your committee votes in favor of putting it on your agenda. I don't think anybody was gonna vote anything you know at that point I've when she doing, snapped. I've been doing this stuff for a long time and I'm still gonna go to the open meeting law training. You know why? Because everything changes. I hope to see you there. Perfect reason why the town staff should take some CPA training. Perfect. I was there for the first hour because I couldn't say the second mm -hmm. hour because I had a meeting, so just so you know. Right, but I think you left Wasn't before I? the the part about the budget. Pardon me? I think you left before the part about the budget. Right, but I did look at it online. Okay, good. You know, so I did review it. So, so then I guess you shouldn't have I had, didn't. you, but you said that you still had questions, so. I mean, it was all explained during that training. Does anyone else have questions from the CPA for us or want to make comments? Because otherwise, I just can't help but think the contention is coming from one person. And I'm sorry to say that, Michelle, but you opened the door, so. I'm sorry, but you violated the open meeting law. That's not what this meeting is. I mean, we were here. No, it, it is because no. we're trying. I think she this is unacceptable. Around, she turns. Oh, well, you think it's I, unacceptable? I think this is this conversation is unacceptable, and, and we're so, in so violation of the open meeting. Why? Right. This no, ha doesn't, have to, do with, doesn't have to do with it. Doesn't have to do with implementation of how a committee operates. No, it's personal attacks against me. No, it I is. didn't say you violated the open meeting law. You did. Me? Yes, you just said <laughs> I didn't say who violated the open meeting law. I you, said you said my name. You after you acknowledged it. I don't know what you're talking about. Really? You said well, my name. You Leah. can check. I did not. I did not. Okay. I said there was an open meeting violation. You said my name. I didn't say your name. You didn't I say, did my not name. say my name. Leah didn't say my name. I did not say her name. Well, we can check later. It's fine. I kind of feel like this is the whole kind of tone of what. Right, and it should be. Been. You have a chairperson right there. You knew before the meeting that you wanted to bring that up. You should have told the chairperson. What? Before what meeting? What are you talking about? I had no idea Stuart was going to bring a sample budget. I assume he brings that to every training session for every town that he attends. Well, what are you doing taking that from him without discussing it, with providing the information? I provided them the second. information the prior meeting, and I was shouted Rich, down. You know I what? think everybody we're, was we're kind of taken back anywhere. because it, was, you, you, it came out of nowhere. Get anywhere, and and the CPA you committee isn't going to get anywhere with this kind of it's attitude either. And it's you know. too bad because it, it is definitely time. You're telling me this has been a labor of love, for me and Sue especially. You know, we had a group of six. Barbara was involved. You know, we worked tirelessly to get this to this point. And nobody said you didn't, okay? And now- and we, we appointed you people. Listen, okay? if you want you credit know? for that, then I'll take credit for I'm turning the direct you on recipient to the CPA. I'm a whole so bunch of this nonsense. the open meeting law. Hostility. It's absolutely wrong and you won't admit it, okay, that you did. Hmm. You did. Huh? And maybe we should file a complaint with the Attorney General Office so they can respond to you. Say that you did and they'll find you. Mm -hmm. If that's what you want. Do what you gotta do, Rich. Mr. Chairman, can, can we hear from a couple of our 
silent members over here that have been a little, at, at, as far as the committee, even Mike, who's not here, seemed to be caught up in a little bit of this. So, can uh, Nancy's gonna get. <laughs> I, I left the meeting before that. I have another meeting, so I left the meeting. But I'm aware of open meeting law and the consequences of, of being watched for future infringements and illegal action. And it's not something that I would be proud of to continue to do. Everybody makes mistakes at times, but we're supposed to be aware. Um, when we were sworn in by the town clerk, she gave us a huge pamphlet <coughs> of lots of information and cautioned us that we need to be diligent. So I would hope that moving forward from this point that the committee would be careful and go through the chairman who does set the agenda and has already said that she'd be willing to put anything on the agenda. So we need to work together to be a productive group. This is a very important new aspect of town government, mm -hmm. uh, the reach of town government in Lakeville, even if we're not exactly in the middle of town government. Right. So I would hope that we continue to, because it's no fun to come to a meeting when you're and leave stressed. <laughs> There's right. enough stress and in the world. I'm really disappointed the way that this all is turning out. You know, I really want to work with everybody. I have never been on a committee before. I read that packet. There was a lot of information in that packet. I didn't understand fully the open meeting law and the violation. I do now. Um, and I hope it doesn't happen again, but we got to learn to work together here. Otherwise, this isn't going to work out. I mean, all the boards, not just you guys, you know, it's, but it does seem like we're getting scolded tonight. It, mm -hmm. it really feels like we're getting our hands slapped. And guess what? We deserve it. We do. We do deserve it. We should not have done it. We shouldn't do it going forward. Amy, I'm just overwhelmed with all this. This is my first time to all these boards, and now I'm chairman of Open Space, so I'm thinking, I gotta watch myself. And um, I just think there is a lot of hostility between all the boards, between everything. I'm just very shocked at all of this. You know, first time being on this board, and I'm just, I didn't think it was going to be like this between everything. I agree. And I do have to say, at that first meeting, um, Lillian, our town clerk, had said to me, you know, we will be in watch, make sure you take care of the agenda. And when the Michelle started reading something off a page from the coalition that no one else had seen. Yes, I was pretty strong in shutting it down because she was reading something off a paper. None of us had it in front of us and I didn't know what it was. And after the fact, she said it was asking to put the budget on, but we never got that far on the reading of the article. All anybody has to do is just please just email me if you want something on the agenda and I will put it there. I've already said that. In fact, um, I think it was Lillian who said if I felt strongly I didn't have to. Well, I've never been denied putting on anything on anybody's agenda in 20 years, so I would never do that. <coughs> Somebody wants something on the agenda, it doesn't, it's not my job to agree with it or not agree with it. I will put it on there and we will, and we will talk about it and we'll vote on it. So I, I'm gonna try to do my best going forward to try to pull it back to center. That's all I can say. We have a job to do, we have a plan to write, and it needs to be all of us, not just one or two or certain individuals, all eight of us, maybe we'll be nine at some point, but all eight of us, which that in itself could be a problem because you could we could very easily have a tie vote on things so if everybody shows up but actually that's probably not going to happen because we're all from different committees we all have different meetings on different nights we can't even find a night hardly where we can all meet on the same night because i have con con she has historical she has open space she has planning board it's been really difficult just to get together and find a meeting room where we can be on cable so that we have can send that uh, late cam tape forward to get our minutes taken. So 
I've been in more situations than this. So all I can say is that um, we will try to get it together and try to come to some kind of peace and try to get the plan written. Just do our job. Let's try to just get the plan written and do our job piece by piece. And I think maybe instead of just putting in the whole plan, we should do piece by piece on the agenda of the plan too. Which I, I'd like a copy of the Middleborough's plan, if if you would, please. Sure. Okay. Do you have anybody else? Anybody else? Michelle, Sue. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm gonna okay. ask for a motion to adjourn. So you're not going to the park commission meeting? Uh, are you going to the park commission meeting? I am. Just I don't know you. if anybody else is going to go or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So motion, second. Nancy, I'll, I'll do the minutes. Oh, okay. I'll Thanks, Trace. <laughs> <laughs> nice savior. you. All right. All motion, second. Any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next thing the agenda discuss possible vote regarding 475 Kenneth Wells Drive. Uh, I, I'm going to excuse myself. Okay. Mr. Chair, if, if it pleases you, I'd like to just give an overview of what I've learned today. Sure, please. Okay. Let's everybody clear it out. So we're having some um, issues, obviously with 475 Kenneth Waltz Drive, as well, frankly, with 310, which isn't on this agenda, but it's kind of part and parcel of the same thing. Um, some of the issues are with Totten, and some of the issues are with the um, owners of those properties. Uh, 475 um, is owned by Bud's Goods, um, which is a, a cannabis concern that is um, uh, coming coming into play or starting to ramp up. You meant 310. So 475. Oh, 475. Yeah, that's good. Excuse yeah. me. You're yeah. Right. Um, so it's very confusing, Mr. Chairman. So the the um, uh, they apparently went to the city, um, submitted a, uh, a frankly incomplete uh, water connection application um, at the staff level was approved and, and implemented. Um, I've spoken with Mr. Ruda, who is the superintendent of water there in, in Taunton. He, he knows that they, they messed up pretty badly and um, is, uh, is, is willing to work with us on that. Um, the, um, we're going to be meeting um, it's, uh, in the near future, probably with, um, with 475, um, but people but it's good to try to get a sense of what's going on exactly because um, from what we've been able to determine so far, we don't really have full information. And Tracy just got some information back today from 475, but um, we, we, we don't really have clear information as to what their usage is gonna be, but it doesn't appear to match what they submitted in their application, which was, so it's at 11 83. We don't know what that means exactly, but it's 11 to 83. 83 gallons a day is nothing. Um, so that, that's, so we don't know what's going on there. We're just trying to figure that out. So, okay. So we're going to stop for a second. Yeah. 475. There's yeah. a gentleman here. I assume he looks like he's from Buds. Can you come up here, please? Oh, great. For the record, my name is Benjamin Nadolny, COO for Buds Goods and Provisions. Um, I'm sorry, could you, could you spell your last name? Um, capital N-A-D-O-L-N-Y. Um, I think there might have been a misunderstanding. I mean, it's, I, I, I apologize. I, uh, a couple weeks ago, I got thumbs up from GC, like, hey, the water's on. Oh, great. It was just sort of an agenda item. Today, I saw we were on the agenda for the town as I was mm -hmm. passing through, and then I saw what it was for. I've been working mm -hmm. to, we've been attempting to reach out for some time now. Have you, I'm sorry, I apologize, have you been reaching out to, I, I assume it was probably to the, maybe the GC yeah, on the right, application? Right, right, to your general contractor and the person that did the work. Okay, I have, I had the both on an email um, since this meeting started, um, kind of saying, please get a prompt reply. Um, and I've read the, uh, the, the exhibits that were the emails that looked like they were going back and forth between Taunton and the town of Lakeville. Um, so I apologize, I, I started catching up on this today. Mm -hmm. I see there might have been confusion about the thought that there might be two lines. Um, there definitely is not two lines. There is uh, one line that just replaced the existing. I, I understand that perhaps the GC put an application that said, um, 
where a lake fill signature, it said NA per lake fill. Yeah, so that was an NA, which we, we had so, never been consulted on that. So that was the, that's the investigation that I started today with the GC. Again, it's the owner, it was, um, you know, to, just to define use, it is manufacturing. It's obviously not, no cultivation. We're simply just packaging. I just have a couple of robots, a couple of packaging machines coming into power okay. flower. We don't know that. Okay, I, I understand. You um, know, you have to tell us what's going on because we don't. Yeah, I, I understand. You know, so I, I mean, if there's cultivation in there, and that's why we're questioning. There's no, there's no cultivation in there. But you know, the manufacturing. Where is this manufacturing going to be sold to? I'm sorry. Where are you going to sell it to? What our our, our the manufacturing, your packaging. Our ca packaged cannabis flower. Oh, into the into the into the market into our own retail stores and retail stores. Correct. You're not selling it to another cannabis marijuana company. I mean, perhaps we have packaging machines, and so we'll be packaging for maybe some cultivators or such. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna be sending it to the ones that are already there on uh, Kenneth Wells Drive. We have no contract or discussion in place to work with those vendors at this time okay we're gonna have a problem with that if you do um okay I, i'm not aware what a problem would be sir well because the agreements that were signed and there's again 2018 there's no 18 or whatever says quote uh, that uh if you buds goods you know sells it to another marijuana facility in the town of lakefield we don't get anything oh i, I apologize i don't i i'm not aware of the, of the language there um prior to and that's unacceptable. Um, but I, I, we don't have any sort of contract or intended agreement with any operators across the, in, in, in the business park. Um, we've had this building since 2017. We were going to build cultivation, abandoned it, very expensive, uh, opened our three retail stores, and we're circling back to the property to, I got a, pack, a pouching machine, packaging goods for our own stores, and then also providing a B2B service of helping other folks kind of package for their own retail stores as well. So would we be able to receive a, a, a letter from, from, your, from your company saying that you don't intend to pursue cultivation? Um, well, we went through special permit crossing for this and site plan review recently to kind of go over our plans for packaging and, and everything. Um, so it's, it's with the town before we started building the walls you know, for this, we just put up some walls. We really didn't do much. Um, we went through site plan review and special permit with the town over this. Okay. So I, I apologize if it's not. So uh, you have a 20,000 square foot facility. Correct. Right. And based upon what I see in the plan, which was forwarded to me by the building inspector, you're using 6,747 square feet. Correct. Okay. What are you going to do with the rest of the 20,000 square feet? Store pallets, jars, um, pouching materials. Um, at this point, that is that is the plan for the space. You know, we 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 aren't. You know, again, we just built out some use to make some value on our own stores because it makes sense to almost like own our own inventory. And so now that I have three stores, we're <coughs> using the space primarily for that, and then to provide the same type of we bring in bulk. I'll package it down and and, and give it. So there. if you uh, are going to. Uh, change this to either a grow facility or an additional processing facility you're going to be coming back to the town the for town special we'd have to get special permit we'd have to get a site plan we'd have to get state approval in yeah. addition to, uh, I, 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 yeah I, I, we, can, we can talk about yeah the I, HCA, what council souls but i think it should at least be a letter from from the company saying they don't intend to pursue cultivation well, I feel like we should um, have another meeting that we can post discussing the HCA. But my concern right now is, you know, we we have a water connection that I don't know anything about. And, you know, so that's I, the I primary issue right now. Is that we, we have a limited amount. We have basically a water ration from the, from the city of Taunton. We have a limited amount of water that we're allowed to use. And we have another situation with another property. It's a cultivator in uh, on Campbell's Drive. Who's asking for fifty thousand gallons a day? And our our annual our, our total allocation is only three hundred thousand gallons altogether. So um, it's we've already used one hundred forty, one hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So this it's 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 a big ask, and um, you know the the so we're very sensitive and and focused on requests that we get. The the frankly the application submitted by your, your contractor, um, if we'd gotten it in that form, we would have said totally unacceptable. Give us a number when it comes to how much we're in terms of gallons. Don't write a number 11 to 83, whatever the heck that means. 
I, I, I apologize. It sounds do. like it sounds like they were slapping the application, guys. I'm I, again. I saw this on the agenda today. And, and this is writing NA the late the no, I think it, um, um, so. You know, essentially, we had a new water line put in. The old meter was like two feet from the circuit panels, so we had that removed, and then Totten put a new meter in. I'm I, again. I'm learning this morning that there was a crossover issue, and I I I, I started an investigation at the start of this meeting. I. You know, everybody's telling me there's definitely not two meters that the old meter was abandoned and stuff like that. And that it was, and that uh, again, a couple weeks ago, everybody gave me a thumbs up. Oh, the water's all done. I'm like, great, awesome. Agenda um, I have done. I, we've never had anybody ask for 11 gallons a day. We have very little to do. That. And, I know, and again, I, I like hearing that right there. Ridiculous. I mean, it's going to be like 10, 12 employees. So, I mean, so it's robots. Well, I'm sure it's getting late. Um, you know, my conversation with Mr. Ruta, we agreed that both in this case and with 310, we're going to we're going to be um, uh, Todd is, is is willing to to kind of present an, um, uh, um, a common approach with 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 these with these companies meet with them find out what they go what they're, what they're what they're trying to do here um, that we offer their engineer to Todd has offered their engineer to be to uh, to to assess whatever they're they're looking to do and are you talking uh, about this one are you talking about I'm talking about any of these so well, I, I mean I know three I, times I, I, technically I on the agenda think but, yeah. the building of that size yeah. Um, they shouldn't be doing that. The engineering for that company should be doing it. Agreed. It requires a certification. Well, as, as you know, Sharon, and, and I'm sorry because not on the agenda, so I won't be circumspective about what I'm going to talk about it here. But the but 310, we've been asking for some time now for in, for engineering and information I analysis. Agree for months. Yeah, and then we, we haven't received it. Well, so. not only that, you know, the question is too, what's in that building? You know, yeah. and they, they are they are under a deadline. This has nothing to do with you. The, the city the city is telling them. As, as you know, 310 connected off of a fire hydrant, and the city is telling them that they're going to shut that down in November mm -hmm. um, because it's going to freeze. You can't right. it's above the ground. Right. I can't use it. So, so what, um, what do we do with this now? Because we so, don't technically have an application here. So at this point, it's, I, I think I think we need to find out about what it, find out exactly what it is that, that, that they, they plan to do. How much? With it, you know, they, they, I received a letter from Totten after the fact, and this wasn't your fault. This was Totten's fault for from their people messed up here. Um, saying, can you sign this? And we already approved it. No, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. So um, the we need to find out. So we're trying to find out the details of what's going on. My conversation with Mr. Ruta late today was very promising. He understands the concern, and um, he's we're prepared to you know to, to jointly meet with 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 the applicants to find out what what their, exactly their plan is and okay. revise your application if necessary. So we have to have a meeting first before we approve this gentleman's. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't okay. recommend to do anything at this point. Do you have a work on that? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I guess I, I apologize. Could I get a little clearer about what happens next? Uh, what happens next? You'll be the, hearing from um, from us and from Totten, and we'll be trying to set up a meeting to find out exactly what the plan is. Um, is it, okay. Is it would it be like a um, not just a new submittal of an application or in order to tidy it up? It would be clear. Well, we've been happy for some time now to clarify this application from your contractor, and we haven't been getting Thank information, information on what. Is, so, so we need to find out what what it is that your plan is. Okay. Sorry. Okay. No problem. Okay. So can I tell you? Okay. Um, so, um, John, can you do me a favor and ask? Lorraine. Lorraine, can you help, please? <clears throat> So Frank was here earlier, right? Well, Frank, he's here now. Oh, there he is. <laughs> okay, next on the agenda is uh, discuss possible voting request, request from the Department of Public Works Director regarding snowplow rate changes in the uh, Freetown Regional School District. Uh, so uh, he's uh, he's attached uh, his recommendation, and uh, I know we don't all like the rates um, because you know they're higher than last year, of course. Uh, but you know, in order for us to get uh, snowplow drivers, we need 26, I believe you said, yeah. Frank. Then um, we have to uh, do this. Um, I do have a question. You, when you talk about Freetown Lakeville, you're talking about just as a monster, right? Yeah, and sometimes the complex, if there's been times in the past where um, 
you know, if they lose equipment or things happen, they'll call me in to help them out. That's pretty big. Usually we'll do like the access roads or we'll salt it. Yeah. Um, if they have issues with that, I usually try to help Greg out, but obviously I always okay. have to tell them that what I'm doing comes first because um, the kids aren't getting to school unless, yeah. <laughs> unless, unless the, the town roads are so, clear. Um, uh, does Freetown help? Yeah. No, I've never <laughs> seen Freetown there, but that's... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Okay, I entertain a motion to uh, approve these new hourly uh, annual <coughs> sorry hourly rental rates for vehicles. So moved. I'll second. Discussion. Um, should it at the top should it say twenty twenty two to twenty twenty three proposed? It should. I sent the revised one in, um, but maybe it didn't make it in. Am I missing something? No, you're not. It's the it's it's the right rates but the initial one i sent in was that was the only part that we hadn't changed when we updated it oh i think um, what he, i think what he's doing already he was comparing the 21 21 ways to the 22 of the two columns no i think no, it's, 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 it's right, right here. here i think there's a i don't know what happened Tracy. I think the oh i see you. you're correct it does well, we'll make say sure that's correct. Yep. Yeah. okay yeah i sent in the revised one so okay any discussion all those in favor aye aye Thank you, Frank. Sorry, I didn't know. No, that's all right. I appreciate it. Thank you for the support. We have to do the next one, too, right? Yep. Oh, the next one? What's the next one? You have two of them. Oh, the free, free time right though. Thank you. Um, I take a motion to approve the uh, <clears throat> request to do the plowing for the free town Lakeville Regional School District. So moved. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Frank. And just so you guys know, when it comes to the Freetown Lakeville, when we do that, typically I try to send our employees to do that. So we're not charging them that rate. But yeah. we just have that there in the instance that I'm sending contractors there. Okay. I appreciate that clarification. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, thank you. Next, I need to discuss a vote to declare a fire department 2008 for tourists as surplus uh, property. I entertain a motion to um, declare the Ford Taurus as a as a surplus. Second. And just so you know, the the value is estimated at approximately six sixteen hundred dollars. Any mm -hmm. discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That was it. <laughs> you hung around for all that. Uh, yeah. I mean, my son's looking for a car. Maybe should do <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Um, okay, next thing in is, is discuss and possible vote request for um, Joanna Rodriguez for an outdoor entertainment permit for a block party on October 2nd, uh, 2022. This is the association uh, beach uh, location on Chambonau uh, Avenue. I obtained a motion to approve it. And where's the time on here? Trace, there it is. Uh, October 2nd uh, from 4 to 7 p.m. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Okay, next is uh, uh, received a uh, application for entertainment license for Steve. Coach. Coach A. Coach A. Coach. Coach, just coach, okay. Has applied for an outdoor entertainment permit on October 2nd, 22, from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. at 7 Chabonneau Avenue. His property abuts the beach. Once the beach party is cleared up, the block party organizes in the band of moving to his house for a cook up. Maintain a motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, uh, review and vote to approve the select board's meeting, minutes meeting of August 29th, September 13th, uh, 22, and September 15th, 22. I'm saying a motion to approve those. So moved with the discussion. Second. Okay, just one second. Second. Okay, discussion on which one, please? All right, um, no edits on the 29th, but on the 13th, um, page five. Um, the top of the page, 
The motion itself was made by Member Fabian and seconded by Member La Camera, not Member Carboni. <clears throat> okay, make those change, I guess. And I'm fine with the 15th. You all set uh, with that, Leah? Uh, yeah, I don't remember that, but. I don't Okay. I watched it again. Okay. Thanks. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We have nothing under new business. We have nothing under old business. <clears throat> okay. Next on the agenda is uh, a possible executive session. I'll entertain a motion for an executive session pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3. Discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining, specifically the uh, PBA Local 185, the IAFF Local 3188, and the Laborers International Union. Um, and we will not be returning to open session. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Carboni, aye. Fabian, aye. The camera, aye. Okay.